Hey, Bruce. Hi, Bob. <laughs> nice to see you here. Yeah. Long time no see. <laughs> I'm I'm backtracking. I hate doing that. I forgot I had this box. And it's most of it's actually in there, believe it or not. With a bug. And I remember seeing rare axles and wheel pieces for that F1 somewhere in one of these other boxes I just looked through earlier. Hey, Mike. I, Welcome to join in. <clears throat> I even have the instructions. Cool. I mean, look how tan old they are. <laughs> Brown. There's decals. Wow. I bet those are really good. I don't think Sun can fix those. <clears throat> well, wait, if I can ref find those. Is this the transmission and rear axles? And there was a piece of the support rods hooked to it. It was in one of these other boxes behind me. So I'm re redoing this again. Awesome. I'm pretty sure it's in this box. Maybe. Remember that one T-bird I was talking about earlier? These needs to be worked on. I found the glass for it in another box a while ago. Of course, it's curbside. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No engine. These are all these are all kits I built when I was a kid. I forgot that was in there. Another definite rebuilder. Yeah, there. I even got the hood. You can make the arch with jalopy out of that one. Yeah. Then I found this. That's the other part of this box. <clears throat> which is what I started fixing a long time ago. It's the uh, pickup truck. Awesome. Awesome. I remember tearing this apart about five years ago because it was all yellow. That's the actual green of the plastic. So anytime I find anything on the bottom side is green, like that, I know where it belongs. <laughs> it's going, apparently I've melted the fenders and some things, so it'll be a diorama now. Or it'll be sitting out in the field with the Mustang. I bet it was in this container. Yep, that's where it's at. Because there's this is the other. This is the other part of that Doom uh, Volkswagen. I turned it into a Doom buggy. I'm pretty sure this is where I've seen the parts. Or not. Wow, surfboards. I got the barrel. Barrel around, too. Got some surfboards. Probably came with the 57, I imagine. Or 56. Well, it's not in there. I got the ones from the Surf Shark. Yeah. Hi, Mike. 
and Michael. You got both of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First, I yeah. thought I see double. Welcome to join in. We're just uh, taking over where Jonathan left off. Hey, Kevin. Went and got me a turkey sandwich and went next door and found mom's TV remote for her so she couldn't bug in. <laughs> I came down, came over and said, She needs a new TV. It's like, oh, damn, what'd you do now? I'm tired of watching this channel. I can't get anything else. So go over there. Sure. Where's the remote at? I don't know. What remote? So I dig through a bedside dresser or dread door, and one of the bottom drawers is the freaking remote. I said, here you go. And change channels. Yeah, mom carried hers all over the house. That's what she does with her, her uh, freaking telephone. You try to call her and you can't get a hold of her and you get all upset figuring something's wrong. It's because she carried it somewhere off and left it lay there and the battery went dead in it. I've got one of those old hard wire landline rotary things i'm gonna have to hook it up in her house just so she got one phone that she can't lose yeah i got uh, a couple of those over in the cabinet If she doesn't put it back in the cradle, then the battery goes dead, and then you can't get a hold of her. Right. Ah, guitar pick. Ah, there's the transmission. Guitar pick. I use those all the time, too. They make great spoilers. Williams Music Store. Man, they've been out of business for 30 years. That's when I had my Guitar. And there's a there's an axle. And there's the other axle. That's probably the front. <laughs> Tweezers, there they are. But I had some. No, I see. Yeah, we'll be here for a while. Phone phone number CL four eight nine eight eight. Been a long time since you heard that one. You like BR five four nine? Yeah. Sample auto sales. Uh huh. Down here, at sample auto sales. We believe in service. <laughs> Greetings, fellow strangers. Hi. And there's the other side of the transmission. What is this? This is. Is that a Ferrari nose I see in that box? With the bug? Me or him? You. <laughs> is that a Ferrari nose or GT40 or? GT. Ah. But there's bits and pieces of it in there. And part of my Volkswagen. Groovy groovy. As I'm I've never seen all the pieces. I'm finding pieces of it. 
I know there's tire. The, I know where the tires are. The tires are in the tar box. Because I've, I've been gathering the, them up too. I've had the Mach Four and the Hardcastle McCormick Coyote. I don't know if they're similar. I don't know, but that's as close as I've ever going to come to a race car. <laughs> I don't. I don't build race cars. Whoa! Hey, hey, where are you going? Come back here. I need to quit talking with my hands. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Although, hey, I remember seeing those pieces when I took the lid off this box. Do you really, Mike? I can tell you right now, it's not a very good kit. It's okay. It's very delicate, shall we say? Parts fit ain't that great. Dimensions on it, not at all really that accurate. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if they remade a new one of it. Hi, Marcy. Okay. See you then. Uh, I don't think there's two. I think there's just the one, but there's the Mach 4, which is the predecessor to the GT40, I believe, came before the 40. They're identical in almost every other part except for the body and a couple of pieces on the interior, but Which is nice because you can find them somewhat readily available. Probably about a $30 kit. If I didn't have boxes in the way of my drawer, I'd dig it up for you. The old hot rod truck. Yeah, the doors are in there. Oh, board. Yippers. I got the hey, big lot. Is that got the big DeSoto in it or the regular Ford block in there? Uh, who knows? I built this as a kid. It's got a real to real tape player in it. Nice. Uh, looks like the big Ford engine. I remember having a couple of them way back when from the old Hot Rod series. That metallic blue on the box. Two-piece plastic tires, tiny little rims. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I had about 30 kits of 30, 30 models, well, 30 kits, when I was a kid. I boxed them all up, and I had them in storage at Dad's house when I went to college. When I got out of college, I went and got them, and I packed them around for years, years, and years. Well, then when I got divorced and moved back here, I moved in the house with Mom. And my four kids, and we were packed in there. So mom decided one day while I was at work to reorganize things. <laughs> yeah. She started taking models and just stuffing them in boxes. <laughs> Pieces are flying, and oh man, I still got three boxes over there that I'm still going through finding the pieces that go back and stick them inside the cars. <laughs> and that's what started me back into modeling in my YouTube channel <coughs> to fix up my own, all my models. Well, come to find out, there's one box that's missing. And there's some models I know I had that I can't find. And it's probably got all the parts that you're missing for the other ones. <laughs> or some of them, yeah. Because <laughs> she just started, like I said, she didn't bother wrapping them up. That's why this one's all busted up. <laughs> Yeah, Mike, I think M AMT had bought MPC, I want to say it was like 89, 
or 90 when the deal went through, which technically is still 43 years old, 44 years old. But it was originally an MPC version. The AMT would have been the later version. But you can't always believe what's on the box art because a lot of times, as Kevin can attest to, retouched photo. <laughs> I was talking about like in uh, Jonathan's stream earlier. The one kid I have, you cannot build with the parts in the box. You can't build the car that's on the on the on the cover. Oh, right, the GTO. Y'all want to see a couple of cool rat rods that I built one time? Sure. Yes. I don't normally build rat rods, but this this was just kind of well, it's rat rods. <laughs> Their game was a rat rod. <laughs> there you. <laughs> that's, that's rat rod. <laughs> a bunch of motors and a few tires and a couple of pictures. There we go. We got rat rods. <laughs> it's kind of like the dog that lost his leg, so they put him on a little wheelchair type of thing. <laughs> when I worked at the computer store, I took an old mouse and I cut the cord off and stuffed a piece of wire in where the, the tail would stick up. I put whiskers and eyeballs on it. I said, well, what's that? I said, that's my rat. Right. <laughs> my computer mouse. Right. It's all grown up from a mouse to a rat. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so... Of course it went on the floor. Where else would it go? Yeah, why would it go anywhere else? Hmm. Okay, I'll work on you someday, I promise. IMC Corporation, Troy, Michigan, 125th scale. That was before they got bought out by AMT, wasn't it? Um, I'm assuming so. But there, yeah, there's no. I was looking for a date. Don't see one. Goes over 200 miles an hour. No way. No <laughs> way. <laughs> Way <Well, hey. laughs> right on the box. <laughs> That's a fast model. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't blink, you'll miss it. Right? Articulating hood, front and rear, posable steering wheels, uh, wheels, turning rear axles, working yeah, suspension. It's because they got them drive shafts that go from the transmission through the suspension thing so and then you might yeah, that. Was, that was the pieces I found while I going up stuffing back in this box if I find all the pieces again I'll put it together someday 
maybe. Or resto mod it. <laughs> hey, that Mustang looks lonely sitting over on the dresser. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few less leaves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got one side of the fence and then the other side of the fence. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, you know, it's a woods. Woods woods grow up and expand. Yep. Okay. This yeah. Is... The, the name of the diode can be which side of the fence are you on. <laughs> uh-huh. I still have this car. It's a 74 Roadrunner. That's up there on the shelf. Pretty cool since you don't see a whole lot of the 74 stuff. There's Michael. Hey, Mike. Mikey. Hey, guys. Been uh, listening most of the evening and working on this damn Hudson trying to get some progress. So, how's everybody doing? I know it's kind of a rhetorical question. I've been listening to you for the last four hours, but everybody doing all right? We're gruntled. We're very gruntled tonight. Yep, that's the word of the day. <laughs> gruntle? Is that uh, akin to disgruntle, or is that the opposite? Of it's, it's the opposite. opposite. Oh, nice. If, if you look up the definition, it's pleased, uh, humorous. It, it's yeah, it's it's in good condition. Good. There good you spirit. go. What? Oh, well, that's that's that's. I was hearing about spirit. people being disgruntled, so we decided we we're going to be gruntled. See, there, there you go. go. That's, that's, that's that positive. That's that positive. Breeds positive, man. You know, we all know negativity breeds negativity. Yeah. So uh, positivity uh, ought to breed positivity if, you know, I mean, that's just the way it's got to work. That's pretty tight there, Bruce. Still shiny. Yeah, it's got a couple of blemishes where the paint's popped <laughs> off there. Windshield's cracked. It's a 74. It's not brand new. <laughs> Old school chassis under it. Yeah, buddy. Looks good. It, as you can see where it lives, it's life. <laughs> Just like a that. But it was it. built. <laughs> it was born in a plastic bag. It'll die in a plastic bag. <laughs> What a way to go, though, right? I mean, if, if that runs true for us, think about where we were born and then where we get to die, if that's, that's the case. From dust to dust. I was thinking a little after that. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, that. I know where you were going. I was, yeah, I wasn't going to comment. <laughs> a little before and after the dust. But yeah, Because my that, mom right? said, she goes, I'm not putting you back in there and redoing that. Yeah, no doubt, right? All right. And, and the correct response to that is, thank you, Mom. <laughs> Spent nine months getting out and the rest of my life trying to get back in. That's the truth. <laughs> I guess, speaking of moms, I got a call from mine this afternoon. Are you busy? And I'm That's like, always a bad thing. Right? I love that question. I'm like, no, not really. Why? She, said, she lives in a, a 65 or 55 and plus community type building thing. She's got her own apartment and whatever, but... And she lives with older folks. But anyway, she said, I'm falling down in the hallway and I can't get up. <laughs> I'm like, you're serious? <laughs> and she was like, yep. She said, yep. I was like, all right, I'll be there in five minutes. Well, by the time I get there, the other old biddies that live around there are all standing around there. She literally was sitting on the floor with her back up to the wall like we all did in high school, right? With her backs up against the lockers just hanging there. out like, with the gals of the apartment. Hanging out with the gals. And she was like. They that the girls were all like they won't let she won't let us help her up. I said, well, I can see why. You get her halfway up, and one of y'all dislocate your dislocator, and she's gonna end up right back down there on the floor again <laughs> with you to help her sit there and hold her. Right? I said, y'all just <laughs> grab my wrist, Mama. Get up. Yeah, she went. I she like her. She just couldn't get back up. Embarrassed more than anything. Dislocation. Yeah, dislocate. Yeah, dislocator, dislocator, and the next thing you know, they're both laying on the ground. <laughs> but I thought it was pretty humorous. Once I knew she was all right, I thought it was pretty humorous. Well, there's there's a bucket for a Corvette. Sixty-five to sixty-seven. Well, sixty-three to sixty-seven. I say sixty-three. Uh, apparently, it's been cut off. 
<laughs> I was going to say, where's the back part? <laughs> yeah. yeah. With a hot knife, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how well you can see it, but most of the chrome is on the Hudson. Oh. Good, man. And you know, I got one of those Hudsons. See? They're a fun kit. That's the Mobius kit. They're a fun kit. They're not, I mean, I like them. I haven't done squat to the body as far as customizing it. Nothing. I did the chassis to get those big fat tires in there and the motor in there, but other than that, I ain't done nothing to it. Didn't do squat to the interior except change out the uh, bucket seats. They were actually, I say change out, put in bucket seats and a tachometer and a steering wheel. And that was it. That's all I did to the interior. A taco meter. A taco <laughs> meter, yeah. But that 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 right there is the whole reason I love this kit. That girl's yeah. got so much stuff going on in the front. It's all chrome. It's like a big truck coming at you. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. It's a cool looking girl. In fact, it's almost got too much. I'm gonna have to get some black liner and try to black line some stuff out, but a little bit anyway. Take some of the Maybe oh, where the bumperettes the meet. Yeah, tune it down just a little bit. I'm going to, uh, right in the center, it's, they got a decal for it, but right in the center is the Hudson emblem. But I'm going right. to go ahead and take some of my <clears> airbrush <throat> paint, put a drop of it on the tape, let it gas off a little bit and think, thicken up. And I'll use that same color green that the body is and put it in the center of there, and that'll help a bunch. So, right. Even yeah, that works. little bit of green in that little bitty area, but it'll, it'll break, it'll take your eye from looking at all that chrome. I like the little bucket of Play Doh. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have it. <laughs> and they were selling it at Dollar Store the other day. This big, usually it's five bucks, and I got it for like two dollars. Nice. So I stole it. I don't know what the hell I'm going to use it for, but I, I mean, you can stick stuff, you know, like painting the stuff that you're painting in it. But you can mask it. with it. You can mask with it too if you want to yeah. tone a chassis. Yeah. You know, just spray your whole underbelly and then stick it to the chat to the belly. And smush it against the you know, the push it up. Yeah, push it up against, yeah. Yeah. I've seen guys uh kind of roll it up in like a little string and then to go crazy with it on their bodies and make like camouflage with it too, you yep, know, help yep. you to make your camouflage. So I figured for two bucks it's worth it. I'll figure it out. <laughs> and if you get the, the modeling clay, you can actually make seat inserts. Cut the the center of the seats out and make like tuck and roll patterns with it, and then bake it for a few minutes just so it hardens, mm. and then glue it up in there and cuts and shaves kind of like Bondo. I got a bunch of that cause I used when I was uh, casting resin. Yeah, you kind of need that to fill the voids and stuff. Huh? Yeah, the cavity as they call it. <laughs> I just found a booger. A booger. Yes, a booger. I got you where I want you. Now I'm going to eat you. <laughs> that, that's it's... an old joke. <laughs> I think it's a little daub of glue on there. I'm hoping. Hmm. We're about to find out. Because I'm fixing to get my papers out and rub on this thing. It's got enough clear coat on it. So, yeah, it's just the coat. Yeah, okay. Woohoo. You know, hey, Bruce. Come on. Hey, come on. <laughs> it's coming on. If you take a, a microwave box and pour all of them into one box, you'll know they're in one box. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're almost funny. Almost is right. <laughs> yeah, almost. Uh, that's why, yeah, I got rid of that part. <laughs> I mean, there's some sense to it, but it's not very logical. <laughs> This yeah, this look this little container is all front end rear end parts, apparently. Nice. That's that's a gold mine right there. We're probably about is, seventy five hundred dollars worth at an auction. <laughs> that's an arm off of a tank. Cool. I mean a half track, I'm sorry, because it had a, a lift on it. I remember that when I built that as a kid. It was a one thirty fifth. I still have some of the wheels too. Your all timers is fading, I'm telling you. <laughs> Look, okay. there's the winch part for the for the front end, and I thought, you know what? That's about the right size to put on the front of a jeep. Would almost yeah. fit on your water tanker too. <laughs> I, 
I Marge. We're supervised now, everybody. We gotta behave. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad. My babysitter finally gets here in the next five, ten minutes. Mom and Bruce will probably come home. <laughs> <laughs> I've been unsupervised all day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you don't bring the cops home, we're good, right? <laughs> well, my, my dog kept me company, so, you know, he, he's a pretty good babysitter, too. <laughs> so is mine. When I want to move or turn, I can't turn because I'm pinned in on both sides. Right. <laughs> yeah, the church finally calmed down after that storm. Yeah, finally, it took about an hour after the storm quit. She finally calmed down. I thought I was going to go sit in the floor with her. I did that one day. Just yeah. sit there on the floor and let her lay on my lap. Just, just Yeah, it, if she's too big to get on the sofa with you or whatever, just sit with her and wrap a blanket around her. That way you don't get all furry. <laughs> Make me feel comfy and safe, that, Daddy. <laughs> I live with I'm a dog. I'm always furry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, kind of try to keep a barrier from it once in a while, a little bit. <laughs> I gave up on that law time ago. Oh, shit. I, I got a freaking retriever, man. I got tan snow all over the house on the daily. <laughs> well, that's her. She's got that little short white hair. She, I mean, yeah, some just, of her fur is really white, and, and she's like two shades of tan when she's cold. <laughs> it just floats everywhere. Mm -hmm. my, dog, my dog was a husky chow wolf. He only weighed about 38 pounds and he shed quite often because he had that. 38 pounds, fur. that's all with that mix? Wow. He was very, it, it was an inbred. The mo one of the boys got yeah. the mother. <laughs> she was Chinese chow and kind of dainty like, but he shed so much. I can still find his fur in some of my model parts boxes. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I found odd things like that going through boxes of stuff I packed up from when the kids were little that's moved from house to house. Yeah. I found random stuff from pets like that. Yeah. But I had a husky chow and you know, she was brindle. She looked like a wolf, but she didn't have any wolf in her. And um her name was Teddy. She lived like 16, 17 years. And she had the the tight fur, like shepherd fur, you know. Right. So her shedding wasn't horrible. She'd shed twice in a season and she would be like two different colors. She'd either be dark or light. It was like, you know, like rabbits changing from their winter fur. <laughs> There's my boy. But yeah, she she was a pretty good sized dog, but yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Only 38 pounds for that triple mix. That That's a small size. That's what yep. I'm saying. Here you go, Bob. That's you want to share that. This, a hundred pound dog. This this is a picture of my puppy. <laughs> That's all the bigger he ever got. Cute. He was about 23, 24 years old, died about five years ago. Aw. He looks like a little lion. He oh dude. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I have another picture of him in here anywhere. It's not in this folder, but I I hope you printed and framed that picture. That's a good picture. Well, there, there's there, no oh, let me see. I I know it's on the uh, cover of my Facebook page. No, oh, it's not going to be in this pile. Where's the other hmm. pile? Okay, so what the trailer? With my puppy pictures. I know we got a stack of puppy pictures in here somewhere. I got a stack of puppy pictures too, but I don't think it's the same kind of puppies. Mm -hmm. yeah, probably not. <laughs> no, we're not interested in your porn collection. Come on, I like to share. Some are of me. <laughs> twenty bucks is twenty bucks, then. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know what you did for a Klondike bar. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is that other stack? The thing feel oh, too for model kit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where is that other little stack? Oh, 
salvage. I finally have all my decal sets. Cool. My Zachary's Garage ones came in the mail today. And I got um, two of those open front showcases from Hobby Headquarters. I haven't cracked them open yet. Got to put them together. Hmm. Surprised it's not in there. Oh, I bet you it's in the other box. I, <laughs> I took a big ink pen, cut a piece off, put springs on the front of it, made it an axle. Oh. <laughs> That's just cute. <laughs> I mean, seriously, look. Hey, if it works. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Tricks of the trade, you know. Yeah, I made my lifelong friend. Uh... We still run around together, by the way. We used to buy, build the models and then play smash them and burn mm -hmm. them. And then we'd take all the pieces and make other stuff out of them. Been there, done that. That's where a lot of this stuff come from. One of oh, my buddies and I, old. one of my buddies and I, we would always go uptown and they had some other cars, but they always had a bunch of NASCAR kits. So we're like, those will make perfect demo derby cars. They roll. So we'd, we'd take them, we'd build them up so that the wheels would roll, and if something broke off, we'd call it, he's in the pits. And <laughs> yeah. We put, we'd put a fishing line on them and sit them alongside the edge of the road, and the car can we pull them out real quick. <laughs> the car would run over them. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that a few times. <laughs> I did that with an RC car one time. Oh man, that one missed. Maybe the next one will get it. Yeah, I did it to one of our neighbors, and the neighbor felt so bad he bought me a new one. Hmm. Come on, wait. And my intent was to get it destroyed, but you know. Well, you want to see how many times it survived before it got smashed. That was a... Uh -huh. that was... And believe it or not, I moved back 40 years later to the same next door to the same house and I live on the same highway. Hmm. And, but now it's not a highway. Now it's a street because the state decided to uh, bypass our town. By a half mile, so I kind of like Radiator, Radiator Springs. You know, we got bypassed. Mm -hmm. Worst things in the world could happen. Yeah, not good for the economy, but yeah, that it isolates people, and that that's not well. There wasn't right. nothing left here anyway because the schools consolidated in '68, and when that happened, all the funeral homes and the grocery stores and gas stations and. All that within five years had all left town. So that that was that was not a thing there, Mike. It already happened. <laughs> well, what the hell? Only found one more picture of my pulpy doggy. I know I got more of them. I just don't know where to live with them. Yeah, I wish I could say I have just one picture. I think I got four gigabytes of pictures of dogs. They're my oh, puppies. So I cute. Got, I, got, I got puppies on my computer. I got got the paddle. Got the paddle. I got like, Can you shake? <laughs> Can you shake? Give me a paw. Fifteen <laughs> freaking crates full of pictures. So uh, I really should just start scanning and somewhere I got a, a pile of like seven or eight pictures of just my dog. 
somewhere. Obviously not in that box, though. I'll share them when I find them. <laughs> no, they're there somewhere. They'll turn up. But when you said he looks like a lion, if you look on my Facebook page, I have him as the cover of my page. And he had just come home from a haircut. And they left a little bit of his mane, not a lot of it. He looked like he had a huge head on like a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was funny and I had to laugh at him, but I felt bad because I was picking on him. But yeah, he just looked so fucking funny, man. <laughs> well, maybe. No, okay. a shop card. Is that a mirror bracket? That looks like a mirror bracket. Yeah, those are just shop cards, not in that box. You can pull me down off the big screen, Bob. What do I do with it? <laughs> it's weird. I would have thought they were over there. Ah, another axle. Where you at? It might be in the drawer I was looking in, but I didn't look hard enough. I'm guessing. <laughs> I haven't seen them in there. So, Bob, this showed up today. I think we talked about it a little bit earlier, but it showed up today. Cool. I opened it up just enough to say that there's, like like you said, there's maybe 10 pieces in here. I think it's, I think things are cute. This guy doesn't have a figure, but it's got this little dude in there, like a, I don't know if he's a Buddha dude or what he is. Yeah, they usually kind of look like a, just a ball, uh, well, oh, haven't no. you heard? Haven't you heard the song? I am the Egg Man. <laughs> I know, I'm not. I didn't know about egg planes until like a week ago. And who no, is you know, hosting? Who is hosting the egg plane build? So I know who to tag. Charlie Mack and Modeling Man. Who is it? Charlie Mack and Daniel Charlie. from Modeling. All right, cool, cool. Charlie Mack. Yeah, because it's like <laughs> there ain't nothing to this thing. I feel like I could put it together and then paint it. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's what Bob part, does. Yeah. It's got a gazillion stickers though, or a gazillion decals. Yeah. So they are just they're, they're, a, they're a great slump buster, is what they are. Yeah, I can see that. Our weekend, you looking for something to do just for a weekend project or an evening? Right, just something just to say you accomplished something. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I finished mine yesterday. I finally got all the little clear bits of cockpit cover on it. <laughs> now I gotta drag out my booth and take some actual clean pictures of it because all the ones I have have stuff in the background on the desk. Yeah, I see I see the the, the canopy cover being a chance to use the uh <coughs> green stuff uh we call it liquid mask. Mm, yeah, a liquid mask would be a really good idea for that, yes. I see that being a good chance for that. And then peel that shit off. And boop. Don't, whatever you do, don't leave it on there for more than 24 hours and don't stick it in the Easy Bake oven. No. Yeah, don't forget you used it. You'll make have a, have a mucky mess. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like to come back off if it's been on there for more than 24 hours. It does not want to come off. Now, so I, my, use, I use the Vallejo brand. There it is. It's yeah, that's the same one. thing. Yeah, I used the one from. Um, That's the one I'm looking for. Yeah, but the the headlights ain't actually tinted on the real car. I used the, the, the like scale one. Same, same with the windshield; it's not the same either. But 
you, you can... that there, you, yeah, that's the one that I like. If there's another one out there that if uh, maybe it's just from different design or whatever, but it, it looks weirder in the back. Well, there's there is a couple of different versions. I don't know if this yeah, this one comes off. This part here is pretty much the exact same as the uh, Mach 4. Okay. Because it, it has the belly pan and everything underneath it. All of this is very similar to that GT40 that uh, <coughs> Bruce had the box of out there earlier. All right. But if you look at all the accuracy of this thing, there's a one of the websites that I go to and check out certain things. This thing is way not accurate. Get on there. As far as where the wheels sit and how high everything mm -hmm. is, it, this whole window piece is all not accurate and a lot of other stuff. But as you can see in my box here, I got two of them. <laughs> well, they've been they've been looking at them. Of course, they want too much for them on the freaking interwebs, but. <laughs> and it's not, and it's not one that I'm going to pay forty, fifty dollars for. If I can't get yeah. it for twenty bucks, I don't need it. You know what I mean? But well, like I said, this is this is probably a thirty-five, maybe forty dollar kit if it's sealed in the bags. Right. You know, the box is. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say sealed outside the box is worth much more, but thirty-five, forty bucks for it, roughly. I got a couple of, a couple of different reference pictures for it. Cool. Yeah, that's like the real car. Yeah, this is the actual real car here. But they didn't make that many of those things, though, right? That it's a fiberglass thing. kit car. They there was two different chassis. The first edition they used was uh oh, what was it? I want to say it was like the Mach 4, but it was a kit car on a Volkswagen chassis, I think. And then the second season, they used a DeLorean car because the the old guy, that guy, okay. yeah, he couldn't get in and out of this thing. So they went to a DeLorean that made it a little longer and wider, made it easier for him to get mm -hmm. in and out of. Hardcastle. Brian, that wasn't Brian Dennehy. Who was that? Was what was his name? That's Brian. Uh, Brian, what uh, uh, yeah, I think it's Dennehy. Brian Dennehy, was that him? Doesn't say on the box, but yeah, this this one was from 83, roughly. That would have been when the show was popular, so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. That was and a cool far, show, at least watch it. And as far as I know, it does have all the gold outlines on a decal sheet. This one don't have it, but. At least I don't think I have decal sheeted. I don't think I've seen them in my uh, my decal box, but it's not that bad of a kit. But it's like I said, it's totally not, it's not quite accurate. accurate but yeah. I can live with not accurate. I mean, it's just it's cool. You can pull me down, Bob. <coughs> I mean, yeah. If 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 all you really want is a red coyote in your collection to say, yeah, that's hard castles. Yeah, and then, it, it, it is what else. it that's is. They, if nothing else, that's the kit they produce for it. So Yeah, and then there's a, a Chevy step side with silver with a gray and charcoal decal package on it, that which his. is the truck that they had from the show. Yeah. I know they reproduce that decal set that you can get like STS or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But then you just take a step side truck, even if it's a few years off, who cares? <laughs> you know, it's just a four by four with a roll bar. You can do the That's same it. thing in same thing in blue and call it John's truck from chips. <laughs> or the uh Scottsdale from uh Fall Guy. Well that that's not a step side though. No, that was a fleet side. And that one was a GMC, but yeah, I mean you could do it. <laughs> I'm sure that sure Chevy and GMC came out in brown and tan on many cars or trucks. Or yeah. <laughs> the Scottsdale package was a cool package, but you can make any model have a Scottsdale package because basically all you got to do is get the Scottsdale decal. what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> yeah. Then they came out with the Silverado. <clears throat> Been Silverado ever since. Like the the new Chevy Stepside that's coming out from uh, Ravel, you can take that one, lift it up on four wheel drive, and it'll be either 
the Hardcastle truck, the Chips truck, uh, Hoopers, the Great American Stuntman. He drove that burgundy colored one. Mm -hmm. e even though the Chevy Sport that came out, that's what that truck was. <laughs> you know. But yeah, there's there's quite a bit of different little things you can do with them. Sure. So did you ever pick up on that Jinx Express that you were looking at that one day? No, I didn't I didn't go any farther with it. Once you gave me the details on it, it wasn't it wasn't something that I had to have anyway, if that makes sense. Right. And uh I just thought it was kind of cool. And then at the price, it was a even, want, not a need. Yeah, and then the price they were asking for it, and I'm like, man, it was Tom <laughs> Daniels, which I, you know, after I had the beer truck, and I that, that I've got that kit now, but you know, after looking more, especially getting this magazine and looking more into the show trucks and cars that he made, I was like, well, you know, it'd be cool to have a collection of Tom Daniels stuff. Right. And uh, and as a builder, like I said, I don't need the OG stuff. I do want something that goes together okay. But The only uh, requirements to having a Tom Daniels collection is hopefully you have or a remake of your first Tom Daniels kit you ever built as a kid or along yeah. that line. And then if you have two or more, you're a show rod collector. <laughs> Is that what it is? Okay. That's it. That's it. Well, I got, two two I, I items are got, technically I think a collection. I got two or more because I've got the. Little, did he do that tanker truck thing? That like fuel tanker with the dual axle? Was that his? Thing? The littles? No, that I believe was John. Uh, uh, I want to say it was John something. O Olmenheimer or something like that. It says on the box, I think, on the newer issue one. But I've got because I've got that one, I believe. I'll tell you the one that I'm really getting into now, and I've got a few of them, and that's that, uh, is it Dave Deal? Deal's Wheels? Yep, Dave Deal's Wheels, yep. I really like his stuff. I've got the Volkswagen Bug, and I've got the, not the Bug, the uh, Van. And I've there's got a Camaro, the, there's a Chevelle, there's a Tram. Yeah, I've got the ZZ28. ZZ I, uh, I have the rare one. I have the Corvette. Yeah, okay, the vet's really rare, and I think the, shit, which one was it? Was it the, yeah, the, the Master Schnitzel and the Poker? Yeah, and, the uh, planes, yeah. The bug, the bug one, too, that was like a, or was it the Myers? The Myers one, I think there's a repop, and then there was like an off-road bug, because I did a little bit of research, but I don't remember right. exactly how it laid out. But You know, that's the thing that sucks about that show rod book. When they came from a series of only so many, why didn't they put the picture of all of them together in that book? Right, yeah. This, if you, yeah. If you're going to do that, you have a Tom Daniels, and then everyone a Tom Daniels. And if you had deals, there everyone gives. You know, yeah. And then, and if it was a miscellaneous here and there, then everyone AMTs, and then everyone of you know monograms or whatever. Or like the Zingers, they had. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of pictures of all of them together. Why not have all of them together in the book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. This is the collection right here. But back to that Jinx Express. Even aside from the show rod and aside from the Tom Daniels, how many armored truck kits have you ever seen? That's true. It's different. It's definitely different. You know, people wanted the 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 bread trucks, the delivery trucks, right? And they, they turned them into some badass low rider stuff and whatever, right? But you never see anybody do anything with the armored truck. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I got, when I came on earlier in Jonathan's, I think uh, Ryan, I think you were there because you commented on it. I, I was talking about that uh, uncertain tea that sold for five hundred and sixty bucks. Mercy, I know yeah. you were there. Yeah. Before that, they had one that was a show rod. It was the mail, the mail man or mail, the mail yes, truck, mail, mail truck, the red, white, and blue one. Yeah, it was like a hop. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like a C cab, but a Woody's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was along that lines. That thing sold for seventy five bucks. And see, that's that's the thing. An old MPC show rod that was never reissued again. They're not that expensive. Seventy five, no. eighty bucks on an old kit like that. Yeah, that, right. that to yeah. me is like that's fair pricing. You know. Yeah, for me, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, it the guy, the guy that got that one that sold it for six fifty or whatever, he got screwed. So he's screwing over whoever's dumb enough to take it from him. 
and right. He probably it. paid four hundred plus for he it. He probably he said paid it, two or three hundred for it, maybe. Or yeah. he patched he patched it together over years looking through junk boxes. Could be hard to say. <laughs> could be there was stuff that was still in packages like the golden rope that which I'd done a little bit of research on them. Yeah, but that the if people rope. don't if people don't build a display, they don't use that part, they throw it in a parts box in the wrapper. Yeah. Trust me, I have seen old stuff still in the wrapper separated from its kit. I, I I wouldn't know either way. Of course, you know he tells the story that the cap uh -huh. the the reserve was three ninety because that's what he paid for it. Uh, well, this is his story, oh, not mine. And then the bids <laughs> went up and up from there. You know? Well, but yeah, he kept he kept the uh, reserve. <laughs> he kept the reserve hidden until it reached the reserve. Well, that's right. how it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did what, that, he, and then he, uh, he but I don't, I don't know. It. He said it was, he said he opened the box, but again, we didn't see him open the yeah. box, so it's all you never know. I try not to be too cynical, but at the same time, people. <laughs> if, you're people gonna be spending, if you're going to be spending triple figures on a car, you, you don't 650, need to be cynical. At, you just got to be smart. And yeah, at six fifty, <laughs> at six fifty, that some bitch better be sealed in factory seal, and I want an inspection. And on top of that, I'm not sending you the money until I can put it in my hands, look at it. And confirm that it's everything that it's supposed to be. Right. I can show you what right here, right here in this bag. I ordered off of eBay one of those new cab over uh, dual engine trucks. I don't know if you guys see it. It's a black box design. And uh, Iceman doesn't make it and says he's not going to make it. So I went on eBay and I ordered one. And I paid, you know, $50 for it. As soon as it got here, I opened it up, and it's made. And if there's printer guys out there, they know the difference from me, or I can quote Iceman. It's a, it's a, it's a certain kind of printing that they do that leaves vicious lines. I'm not talking oh, yeah. about stuff that you can sand out. I mean vicious, he, vicious, he vicious line. He printed it on an FDM, or he printed it, it super fast. Yeah, yep. it was it, some sort of – because he because when I – when I with the contact seller, if you, you he, he called it he called it some sort of some sort of type of way of doing it. He said it takes a professional to do it. I said, dude, no, I may not be a professional, but I'm pretty good at what I'm doing. And if I try to sand these lines out of this, I'm not gonna have anything left. Right. You can't sand but, them out. You gotta fill them in. Yeah, and, and I wasn't doing all that. But <laughs> now, in his defense, and that's why I won't talk bad about him. He said, send it back. As long as everything's there, then I'll give you back your money. I'm like, fair enough. I'm just, I uh -huh. wasn't happy with it. But of course, than getting, getting a bad he review. You, he knew he was wrong. He didn't want yeah, to. He, he, yeah, he was just, he, yeah, he was just he hoping. Was silent, that's all. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. I was ready to throw it in the corner. And uh, when I sent it to Iceman, I'm like, am I spoiled? To your stuff, is this like really <laughs> the norm? And he's like, No, dude, <laughs> that's junk. No, that, that, that was printed either super fast or on an FBM printer. That's the only way to get them. I can tell you, yeah, I think it is FBM, Marcy. I think he, you hit the nail on the FB, head. He uh, uh, he called it. Let me see it's what not, he called there's it. No way to make that shit smooth. Yep. He called Bondo. it. This is printed on a filament printer. And that's why I had to put, I had to put coats and coats and coats of. Of high fill primer on it and send it back. I was going to say about probably about ten coats of primer on it. FDM, you're exactly right, Marcy. That's exactly what. Uh, you still see some spots where you still see the lines. I got to put hit it again. Mm -hmm. Especially along the yeah, edges he here. Just, he just emailed me, so now I got to go back here. Yes, yeah, the FDM, Mike. That's the one where they're putting on. Basically, it looks like fishing line. Yeah, it's that's it's horrible. And the, and the machine melts it and squirts it out. Yep. Yeah, you can't get that high quality work on an FDM printer. It's yeah. just not. It's meant for gaming terrain and bulky pieces that have no major detail. Or are planned to be covered by grasses and things. <laughs> yeah, like I said it's great for diorama parts and and you know game terrain. That's that's it. Or like that, that's supposed to be like an STS rocket, you know. It's, so it's uh, a lot of the guys are building RC planes out of that stuff because mm -hmm. it's quick, quick and cheap, and you don't hey, you doesn't yeah. need, don't need the fidelity of detail as 
is Panzer Man Bill likes to say. Yeah. Right. And if you break something, you just go make a new one. You still print a new part. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll... It has its place, but, you know, not for most of what we would do. <laughs> yeah, my brother does a lot of cosplay. So, like, you printed up the last thing you printed. Oh, he printed a multi pass <laughs> for, for his COVID. Uh, First COVID uh, card. Yeah. And he, he printed up a multi pass. That's, that's good. I like that. New, new, new Dallas multi pass. Silly like that. Yeah. Multi pass. <laughs> multi pass. I love that show. That movie. Yeah, that's a good movie. That woman could sing once she hit that high note. Gotta be a sheet of paper in here, I think. Top left drawer. There he did a he did a stormtrooper helmet. He used the uh, helmet for stuff like that. And the uh, same thing. Yeah, just, some of my friends that still do cosplay are making a lot of their own stuff at home now. And the same thing. You, know, you put coats and coats of filler primer on it and sand it back till it's smooth, and then you. Your final code finish on it. I've got a 1 through 50 scale USS Daedalus that's printed on filament printer that I haven't started yet just for that reason. It's going to take boatloads of primer. I bet it's going to take days to get that smooth. Yeah, I was gonna say, this one here, I don't know that you could... Even the body itself, the underside of the, the carriage was just nothing but I guess fusing fish line. It, it looked just like Fish lines stacked beside each other. Yeah. If you tried to um, fill that in, it's just that's what it does. And I get this part glued in there. I'll go grab my Daedalus and I can show it to you. My son in this defense, there weren't there weren't resin printers available on the market when it was done, when it was built, printed. All there was was filament printers. Yeah, my son would go buy me one of those filament printers. I said, no, no, no. I don't want a filament printer. Yeah, he just... I want a resin printer! No, you want you want a resin printer. You definitely want a resin printer. I mean, the, the filament is... It smells horrible. Let me go grab it. It smells oh. like somebody lit a tackle box on fire. <laughs> really nasty. You know, I wondered about that. It's gross. Well, here, I can spray you and do that. This was printed on a on a filament printer, and this is it's good for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's my aircraft jig. That's cool. Yeah, anything that needs to just be big and simple. That's really all, all it's good for. Or replaceable, <laughs> consumable, replaceable. Well, I, I pulled this one out, but I got it all wrapped up now. I'll rewrap it, but like the, and I guess you guys are familiar with it. But like even the cap, the, the most prominent part of it, you it, you could take your thumb and like run your finger on it. Mm -hmm. You can you can file your fingers on it. Yeah, you could. You could. You could. I think I can use that. It is kind of nice to go through a treasure box like that, though, ain't it, Bruce? All kinds yes. of goodies. <laughs> I started out trying to find uh, front end parts for this uh, 32 that I bought off that guy that, that doesn't have any front end or rear end parts. And I looked at that 30 kit, Bob, the five window. 
And there was, I don't know what I did, but there was the extra parts were gone. I wonder if I can put a Mustang for an in under that. Mustang too? <laughs> well, I'm assuming it's a Mustang. Put steering wheels on it. That'd be, look at that, look weird. Weird is cool. <laughs> but I'm sitting here thinking, That's weird looks yeah. good. The word you're looking for is unique. I like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> big words, Bruce. Big words. Them 25 cent words stumble me every time. I'm telling you. After 18 cents, I'm lost. <laughs> 18 cents? You're doing good. I get up over a nickel and I'm lost. <laughs> I bought this kit for five bucks. And it's got everything in it to make the uh they, they took all the chassis parts out of what they did. Mm -hmm. And I want to build that little one right, right there. That little slope top on it. It's all there. It's all there's no engine and there's no chassis parts, but I would like steering linkage and springs and all that. That's all gone, but the frame is there. So that's what started this search arama. Search arama. That's the word of the day. Search arama. Right. So I'm re refreshing myself with what parts I have. That's <laughs> forty years old. Now, here you go, S. This is done with the filament printer. I can see that from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those lines. Yeah. yeah. And he printed it on the finest one he could. Yeah. He sends it. But in his defense, there were no resin printers commercially available at the time. Well, the part that kind of got me is when he said, I build these for professionals and it takes. So, so, I'm like, dude, I may not be a professional, but I'm kind of okay at building models. And there's no, there's no, this is no, I would be ashamed <laughs> to put this out there. You're okay at it, are you? I'm, I think I'm okay. At it. I like to think I'm okay at it. You know, I got some compliments <laughs> on my Volkswagen, but I said, did pretty good on that Hudson. So far, it's not done, and I haven't screwed it up yet, so that's a bonus. Well, right. there, there is that. I'm almost there. Of course, that's about the time to screw it up, like I just did, put a thumbprint of fucking super glue in the middle of it. <laughs> yep. Let's thank God there's thank God there's four coats of clear on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Very heavy coats of 2K clear at that. <laughs> it's always the thumb. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was too, I was pressing down. I was pressing down on the hood piece. There's a big chrome piece that goes on the hood. I was pressing down on it, and the side of my thumb had some glue on it, and I didn't see it. And I pressed it down, and I pulled it. I'm like, "Oops!" Fingerprinted that one. But I literally have the six hundred, or excuse me, the six thousand, the eight thousand, and the twelve thousand all right here. We're getting it. <laughs> One more coat of clear, and then put it's the like Rat Rod. In. It's like Rat Rod Bob says, "We're getting it. We just ain't got it yet." That's it. We're getting it. <laughs> Gaining on it. You ain't gonna want to miss this. You just ain't. <laughs> I need one of them little mascots. <laughs> But this kit doesn't exist in the real world, so. Oh, that's the medical ship. Wait a minute. So you're not in the real world? Because I'm no. looking at it. <laughs> Wait, am I not in the real world? 
<laughs> yeah, Help so me this, here. <laughs> I'm confused. Help me understand. <laughs> when this one was made, there were no resin printers, so. It's an interesting kit. You know, I use that same design for medical ship. The guy designed it did a good job because he designed it to be for lighting it. And he said he made all the parts. Cool. Hollow and uh, like on the in here, there's chaseways in, in here for the wires to go through. Nice. And got big, cool. big for the for the stand them out too. Back to even. <laughs> Designed it so that you could light it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. I've heard that before. That was from the crow, the first yeah. one. T bird. Fire it up. Fire it up. <laughs> See, that's another movie car nobody's done yet. But then again, there isn't a big, big T bird like that either, is there? We did the stand part too. Well, that's cool. Oh, nice. And so, there's another piece that goes. There's another piece that goes yeah, on top. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Well, I'd make a clock out of that and hang it on the wall. Yeah, right. that's kind of yeah. where my brain went. <laughs> so, that translucent. So there's another. But you got to cut a piece to go on the top. But greetings, Theo. That's one of those deals. Just stop smacking. It says beat me up, Scotty. Right? Yeah. Isn't that what that is? Yeah, if you can get it on your chest. <laughs> well, a Klingon could probably get it on his chest. <laughs> right? Only the cat. Pounds yeah. left it. <laughs> transparent filament. He did a real good job on it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say transparent aluminum. <laughs> yeah, transparent aluminum. <laughs> Here's the insert piece part. You must have sprayed it with clear. <laughs> How do we know he didn't invent that? And decal sheet, even Kim sent me a decal sheet for it. That sounds like something Dart would be interested in. <laughs> I was talking to him the other day and he probably even sent it to me. So, yeah, I need to get on building that thing, but I got to get eight a primer to do it with. I was watching some history of Star Trek or whatever, some behind the scenes or what, and apparently, at least in some of the videos, some of the older stuff, even the older stuff, the when they were shooting like the 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 ship itself and some of the inside scenes, that that was actually a model. I didn't know that. I mean, oh, obviously, yeah. I knew it wasn't a full size one, but I didn't know how they come about making it. Yeah, between <laughs> the the. the model. The studio sets and then the, the actual outside the ship things are always models. That's the cool. model set still it was static. They just moved the background. And, and the same end. thing applies to when you see like an apocalypse where like a big bomb goes off in a city and it devastates the city or an earthquake or a tidal wave. All of that is model builds. Okay. Yeah. I saw so the one. If you want a serious the... job in modeling. That just would be it. Yeah, huh? Just go ask Adam Savage. <laughs> Yeah. Right. You guys yeah. remember way back when when HBO first came out and they had the the scene where you were like in the camera and you dropped down into the city and you yep. went through the city and it popped up and it was said HBO. I saw how they made that with models. That was a big big scale, like a big room right. size model. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and you know what would be really cool is to be able to get that after they're done with the movie. Right, and to have it so but 40 they, 50 years later, you're like, I got this, and it's worth lots of money now, <laughs> you know. And when that they, would when they, be because those models are unique again, they right. don't make a whole bunch of them. Usually, when they replicate an actual city <clears throat> as best they can, they do keep them because they figure they're going to be in the movie business, they'll probably shoot another one in that town, right? And like, if it's a tidal wave movie, there's two different versions. There's the before and the after version, and some of it's CGI in the middle of it. Because you got to have broken buildings and the way they fall apart. If they had those as the before ones, you'd see all the cracks where it's going to break apart. 
Yeah. Uh, I yeah. dare say, and I don't know, but I would dare say that most of it now would be CGI, wouldn't it? Well, most of it now, yes, but there is still a lot of it they got to do with camera to get the outlines, the basics, and everything else. But it, most of them, like say they had the big city, they could take a little urban area or something and reuse those houses to make a small town that's fictional. You know, the skyscraper and the bigger city city stuff, you know, depends. They can place them around because some of them are just square blocks with windows, you know. Oh, snakies. And anytime they got to do a close up, they just go to the real building. <laughs> you know? yeah, you, yeah, you show a side of a, a, a brick building, you know, with 30 windows in it, they all look the same. Pretty much, yeah. Man, you know, I need to know. go shopping for some paint. I ain't got no paint. At least not the I know right color. I know this guy <laughs> sells paint. <laughs> yeah. You get ten percent off if you use the code. Yeah, <laughs> is that MCW paints? No, uh, I got no. some of those too, but no, that's not. It. I'd like to get hooked up with them. They make some really cool stuff, but it kind of conflicts with my other paint sponsors. So, <laughs> there ain't no conflict. <laughs> well, that's you know, and my guys, they don't care, you know, but. Uh, I, I do. I really enjoy the the scale finish and stuff. I really enjoy it. But he doesn't have anything that's in, well. He's got enamels, but he doesn't have anything that's designed for brush. So that's why I bought the uh, MCW brush stuff. But um, I can still take the. Uh, you literally can brush paint with any kind. I of do. Paint. Yeah, I do. I just take the the stuff that I have here, let it gas out a little bit. And then turn around and you know, put it on a piece of tape and drop a tube for touch up. So it dries out, does You know, the hardest stuff I ever used was nail polish. And if yeah, you scuff it and you need to do some touch up, that stuff don't brush very well. <laughs> it makes your fingernails look beautiful, but trying to touch up <laughs> on a car, not so well. <laughs> it um, it works great through an airbrush if you can thin it down and get the right texture out of it. I have one of those. It's called Prevail. It's a little jar and a aerosol can that connects on top of it. And you, you can put, I don't know, probably about eight, maybe nine milliliters or, or ounces, fluid ounces in there. It's pretty big. I used, when I did fingernail polish, I would buy three of a color from like the dollar store. And I'd put all three of them in there with some fingernail polish remover to reduce it. One of those cans is like nine bucks or seven bucks, something like that. It's quick and simple, and just open the freaking jar, throw some more fingernail polish in there, shake it up, dump it out, you're done. <laughs> I've got Little. a couple of those uh, propellant can brushes. I use them to paint my furniture. <laughs> That's what I use for my uh, my Escalade. My my mom's replica of her cutlass, the brown one, because that was the only place I could find a nice, light enough, not really root beer. It was more caramel-like. Yeah. That turned out really nice. Nice and glossy, other than there's a little uh, seam line thing on the hood that didn't show up until after. After everything, yeah. You don't see it in the primer. You don't see it in the, the base mold, you know, and then all of a sudden it's there. It's like, where did you come from? Yeah, the, the seam line fairy. <laughs> yeah, and it's right on the hood, too. So it's like, mm, well, we'll just take that off, shove it under the car, because under the hood is fully wired. <laughs> yeah, I was worried about on that 55 that the ghost marks for the hood scoop cut out would show through the paint, but fortunately it didn't. That's good. Because those are a pain in the ass to get rid of. Yeah, anytime they got that big groove underneath for the cutout, it's like, it's going to be amusable. <laughs> Supposedly the best way to prevent that is to actually cut it out and fill it back in. I am not knowing. Hello, honey. What is for dinner? <laughs> How much for the slippy dollar two ninety eight? <laughs> My nomad wagon I did for Fat Fender's Fins and Crow. 
I took uh, my body putty tool like around that square you could cut out for the hood. Did filling it help? I didn't see it on the top side, so well, I can't good. see sure if it did any good or not, but <laughs> I was concerned with it, so I thought, well, I got this green stuff filler. I used that. My 12-year-old boy came out when you said that. Did it fill it? Well, she didn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, green stuff putty. I just saw that on the shorts the other day. The guy looks at his wife and says, are those felt jeans? No, they're yeah. denim. He reaches down, grabs her ass, and they're felt now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Sorry, that was my 12-year-old boy. I put him back in his room. <laughs> he can come out to play. Hey, Jack's well, mother. <laughs> Jack, come out and play. No, Jack has to stay in his room. Jack's a bad boy. <laughs> they just turned it back. <laughs> hey, hey, where you think you're going? Get back up here. <clears throat> so one nice part about having this keyboard tray underneath this my building area. I can pull it out, and it does sometimes deflect the carpet monster from getting things. Well, I built a, a half-inch lip all the way around my work table to, in an effort to catch the stuff before the carpet, mar car carpet monster gets it. And I put a light on a little LED light there so I can flick the light on, and it shined directly onto my workspace. No. So what happens? I bring everything up to me because I'm old and can't see. And when it wants to do it, it hits that piece of wood that I got for a trip <laughs> around there, and then it takes off. It, just, <laughs> it could be it could be the shelf monster that ends up with your stuff instead of the carpet monster. Yep. So I didn't think that out all the way. But, <clears throat> yeah. That's why I didn't do that because I thought about adding that. I thought, well, half the time I got I, I'm holding it over the keyboard tray, so I pull the keyboard tray out. That's what I need to put yeah. on my desk one of these days. Because I'm like you, I'm old, can't see, and I'm half blind too. Literally. Yeah. Uh, the upside for me is I got this belly that hangs out right up underneath where I work. So every now and then it just land there and it's kind of like cleavage. I just pick it off, put it back on where it goes, and I'm good. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, it's like the ones that land on my beard. I just pick pick the There you go. <laughs> Move right along. That's it. <laughs> Like nothing ever happened. Like yeah. nothing. Nothing to see happened. here. Nothing to see here. Keep moving. Move along. Move along. Move along. Move along. Okay, I'm getting enough stuff here. I need to. I need to. Uh, yeah. Yep. Sounds like that's exactly what I would do. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. Guess where that went. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Did you hear all that? Yeah, it well. like it went airborne. <laughs> yeah, well, that was that box of uh, seats and oh shit, <laughs> what kind of crap? It's all over the floor. You're gonna be looking for that for days. Or stepping on one or the other. Yeah, yeah. if you, if you, you don't get it all, you'll one. find it eventually. Yeah. You may have to have it surgically removed from the bottom of your foot, but you'll find it. <laughs> yeah, he's going through the box and showing me the land out bars he found from my hearse now that my hearse is already built. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I found two sets of them. I said, hey, Bob, look what I found. <laughs> Thanks, but I don't need them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're a day late in a uh, dollar store. Damn it. Well, the box is empty. But the floor is full. Yeah. It's everywhere. Well, now you can get a closer look at what you have because you got to pick up each piece. <laughs> well, That's the truth. <laughs> it's like reorganizing. Oh, I forgot I had that. <laughs> you put right? it back down. You don't have it anymore. When I was looking for jump seats the other day and I found three sets in this box. 
Fortunately, I pretty much know where everything is right now because I just had to tear it all apart earlier this week with those tires that, that I put in the box so I wouldn't lose them. Yeah, you hit them from yourself. I don't know how many times I've done that. Because somewhere in the back of my brain, I have partially planned bills. So, you know, the kits that I've taken the cellophane off of and looked at and kind of flipped through and I, I think, yeah, maybe I'll do this and I'll get some aftermarket part and shove it in that box and put it back mm -hmm. on the shelf. And then two days later, I'll be like, I swear I bought, you know. <laughs> I literally was talk, talking to Jason Hanscom the other day and we were chatting and he's talking about, you know, he does that uh, street machines group build. Yeah. And he was like, are you going to do one this year? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do one. I've got it all planned out. And then as I'm sitting there talking to him, I'm like, cause I know the kid, I want to do a, uh, I got an AMX that I'm going to do. And I'm like, Oh crap. I bought two motors for that thing because I did exactly what you were saying, Marcy. When I got one motor that I wanted to put in it, I put it right in the box. And then I put the box on the shelf. I put the tires and the motor in it that I wanted, and I put it on the shelf. And I got to thinking, <coughs> somebody said something about street machine build the other day. And I'm like, man, I got to get that motor before I forget. So I ordered another one of the motors. And as I was talking to him, I'm like, that was 20 bucks I didn't need to spend. <laughs> Wait a minute. Jason's hosting the second annual street machine? Now, yeah, it hasn't started yet, but he said he's it, he has one coming up. I don't know when it starts. I was going to say, wasn't it like August or something last year? Because I jumped in on it, that. I did the it could AMT. be. It could be. I, I'm not sure. I, I did the AMT 65 Bonneville with the Craftsman Series chassis, and I cut all the suspension out from underneath it and redid it all. <laughs> nice. uh, I guess, I'm guessing Dylan will probably do his Pro Street one again this summer, too. I've got one coming up. Um, in fact, I got to talk to Jason tomorrow. He's going to help me because I've never done a group build. So he's going to help me kind of be, uh, I, I won't say co-host because that implies he's second fiddle, but, uh, <coughs> and, uh, you know, we're going to do it together. So it's a buddy build if you're going to do it together. Yeah, no, no, well, he's hosting a group build, but, but Jason's, Jason's going to be the sounding board to get it up and running. There you go. Ah, that, that's my, because that, yeah, he's got experience with it. And I picked a I picked a topic that's going to be not necessarily the most uh, what's the word I'm looking for not necessarily common. the most popular common. It's basically uh, what you would see at your local circle track, so like a little dirt car, a little asphalt car. So I'm kind of figuring that a lot of people won't get in on it, which would be good for me. I'll be able to keep up and learn and, and you know keep up with their stuff. Well, that'll we'll be cool because if Jeff ever shows me that Legends car again, I definitely wouldn't mind one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the idea is like we don't want NASCARs in there. You know, it's something that you would see at your local rounding round track. Right. Yeah. Late model, six cylinder like, class, hobby yeah, stocks, yeah, yeah, modifieds. Yeah, you know. yeah, anything. It opens up the door for guys that are scratch builders that can take an old body and an old chassis and you know slam something together and call it a hobby stock or. You know, whatever they wanted to do in any years, and it'll be right. a year long build. Basically, this time next year, we'll close it up and then start another one. What is it? I, I, I got to talk to Jason tomorrow. It'll be coming up, but it'll be probably at least at least a week before I announce it. Um, I got I've already talked to Ron Coon from Ron Coon Resins, he's willing to offer a 10% discount. For the first two weeks of the build, so he's and he sells a lot of really neat uh, round round stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. that's specific for that bodies and wheels and bodies and wheels and, and, and yep. that sort of thing. So, uh, very very specific parts to that that genre. Very if you specific will. time frame. Doesn't he want to make any money? I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, he offered it, and I was happy to have whatever he was willing yeah, to do. Yeah, I mean, I thought take, the same you know, thing. Like, take wow, it because he's saying, yeah, he's going to do it, but fucking hell, two weeks. Well, I mean, make if, money. if you have the start date of the group build and it's known that you get a, a two week to get it at a discount, yeah. the reason for that is probably because most everybody that's going to jump into it is going to jump in within that first two weeks. Or at yeah. least say they're going to get in, haven't gotten or ordered their kit or figured what they're getting into or whatever. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I was grateful to have what he was willing to give. And um, yeah, it's something. But, but I, I, I thought the same thing, Marcy. I, I'm not. I, I was like, wow, that's specific. Why? Why just two weeks? Yeah, but I'll be maybe... surprised if he makes a couple of hundred bucks. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, it takes time to get the information out there. 
Sure. So sure. It takes time, time to get out there. taken away it's... by the day. So, for example, okay, what if um, I didn't know this was going to happen and I happened past your channel, discovered that I liked your material and subbed to you, and then boom, you announced this in this video that's like five videos back that I don't get to. Right. And somebody else goes, oh, hey, there's this and this, but that offer expires on this date. And that date's tomorrow, and my payday's not for another three days. Yeah, right. I get you. I get you. I, I, I you know, agree with you that, that's the situation for most people. Sure, sure. But it, 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 it would take me a week. It would take me a week at least if I if I if I stumbled up on one tomorrow that I just had to be a part of, right? I, I just really do. It was a, a a subject matter that I really wanted to do. It would take me a week at least to figure out what I wanted to do, and you know which kit and how I wanted right, to do it. Right, because you can't and, you know, decide that, on aftermarket parts till you know what the hell you're putting it on. Right. You know, well, maybe so. you can ask them if from the start date. <laughs> Don't offer the the discount until two weeks into it, so that, that people have a week for the video to get out and get caught up. Another week for some of the I'm jumping in on your group build videos to come out and people be like, oh yeah, cool, I want in on this. Go back to your channel and then find out that the discount don't start until day after tomorrow. Right. That would be kind of cool because then that gives you a chance to get the word free out. Free advertising. So yeah. you would think that he'd want more free advertising. You would think so. I mean, that's I, that's I, how business works, dollar, but that's not how yeah, people work. Ten cents on the dollar ain't shit. He can afford to give give it up a little bit longer. That's sure. Dumb. Get, putting I, a, I, a, 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 a specific time frame on it is just dumb. All I can say is I would love to do a, a, a six pack. Brewster yeah, Baker's that Camaro, Camaro. six-pack Camaro, and that's the thing Ron Coon offers that nobody else does is those bodies, he right? Has With the right Camaro. fairing on the nose and everything. Yep, yeah. he's got the fairing on the nose, the bubble fender Camaro, and it takes an old AMT NASCAR chassis. I mean, you can go right. elaborate with it and buy something else, but that old AMT chassis will fit right underneath it. Yeah, and, I'm, I'm uh, a member of quite a few of the Facebook dirt trackers and stuff like that mm -hmm. where. It's anything from the 30s to the 90s and whatever and that, else. But and that's, and that's, I like the really old stuff. I've got, I got a 34 Slammer, a 35 Chevy, a 36 Wild One, and, you know, 30. All the, all the modifieds, yep, yeah. Yeah, all yep. the modifieds, and, you know, you could be that, too. Just something, like I said, something. The Rat see. Vega and all them. Yeah, yeah. I got the Rat, I got, I got the Rat Vega and the uh, Ridge Runner Pinto. <laughs> well, shit. For that matter, you could take a NASCAR kit, keep the glass out of it, put dirt track tires on it, and go freaking hobby stocking. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> again, again, yeah, you could do it, or you can go as far as getting some of these fancy 3D printed. Because I'm going to do my brother's car, which is a tribute to him, and then I'm going to because Ron did get on board. I'm using one of his. This is one of his bodies. I'm using his Cuda body, and and I'm, I'll build them both. Well, but, speaking uh, of, there's also the Dodge Dart like that. Yep, I got the swinger um, and the duster or whatever. Yeah, they got the Valiant Scamp, and then you got the Richard Petty car that are all. That's in the, the. There's a whole bunch of them anyway, but. See, I got all kinds of dirt tires up there, and some really big ones in the middle there. They're almost like freaking balloon tires. These ones are. You need more tires. Okay, <laughs> these are, these are like balloon tires, but They're these right. are actually dirt track car dirt tires. tires right? I got this chassis from JR's Racing. This is the one that I'm going to put underneath. This is actually a late model chassis. I'm going to put it underneath the Ron Coon because that thing fits. I mean, it fits perfect. See, these got the bead locks, the, the nice dirt track tread on them. Yeah. They were from a die cast, but I don't care. Don't and these are these are the same exact thing, except these ones are resin with the, the deeper tread or different five spoke and the Hoosiers on them. Really nice. And then I also have these ones with the square tread. I got the square tread in them. Yeah, the, that's uh, I've got the, um, what do they call them? The Pro Plastic Performance Products. I got, got big ones. Plastic. I got medium ones. I even got some really super small ones. Oh, and, and you could even do sprint cars, the winged wonders. Winged or unwinged. 
I got the I got the tractor tire basically. You know, the, the yeah. straight groove, no tread, yeah. straight groove. Yeah, See there, sounds like you there. got everything you need to build to join the build room, man. That's it. Well, if you're talking Saturday night dirt track, man, that's my style right there. That's literally, I mean, dirt track. I didn't I thought about just dirt track, but I didn't want to narrow it down. So like Saturday night, and that may be the quote we use your Saturday night local racetrack. Car. Saturday you, night you know. under the lights. That's all they there call. There you go. There you go. Saturday I night. I might steal that. The, yeah, I might do it. Steal that. That's yeah, that's not... what it is. That's how you get to your local track is Saturday night under mm -hmm. the lights. Where's the other one? Um, let's see. The track I went to as a kid, Saturday night race cars were whatever they could drag out of the junkyard and put together. That's, and yeah, that's it. Throw a number on it. And that's another thing. You know, when it's all beat up, banged up, or whatever, that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we'll even, curl them off, knock the glass out, and, yeah. and run it. Even yeah. these old Goodyear tires, the ones that nobody uses, <laughs> the rallies or whatever they call them, mm -hmm. these make decent dirt track tires too. They're not like accurate or anything, but well, they may be more accurate than you think because cheap tires is what everybody ran on the hobby stocks and on the uh entry class stuff because they were cheap. <laughs> you get them right. on the car at the junkyard, all right? Yeah, I, I have a few tires. <laughs> any anytime I get anytime I get brand new tires that are in the bag, I don't even yeah. open them because I have so many that are out of the bag. Why would I? You know? All right, leave them in the bag and keep them more organized that way. Well, e even in the garage, I have one of these that's twice as wide and a whole lot deeper, and it's just a single drawer. And I have Ziploc bags of just this tire, just this tire, just this tire. And there's probably 50 to 100 and some of each bag. <laughs> you know? That's a bunch. And this, this one is just the street tires. This one is trucks, truck tires and engines. There's like five freaking Corvette engines in here. But these are just the truck tires. You know, anything that's four-wheel drive, Lindbergh, big old freaking 116. These are the tires that actually came on the one that I have, like your big tracks, the yellow one. Right, right. This is the size, but I found some nice rims to put in there. And Ertle freaking tractor tires. Yeah, Want to make yeah. a swamp buggy one of these days. I mean, tell me that ain't swamp buggy material, right? That is there, straight right? up swamp buggy material. <laughs> right? You know, I got brand new freaking desert dogs that have never even opened. You know what those little set of V treads would be cool on? If they made a lawnmower tractor. I want to find up. two more of these ones. That's cool. What are these? High rider or rough rider road busters. I don't know if you can read that on there, but that's what they are. Bucky Beaver ground grippers is what they look like. Yeah, well, they were from a toy, but I only have two of them. <laughs> and then this is my bag of Orange Blossom special parts. I, I have, have one, one of those tubes in the box. I have it's one back tire. <laughs> I have one back tire. I have the chassis and the front fenders and a grill. I don't have the cab. Somewhere I think I have the two sides to the box. Yeah, if you need a motor, I got a Hemi, I got a Corvette, a Corvette, another Corvette, another Corvette. <laughs> There's probably another Corvette in here too. Oh, here's an here's for the dirt tracker right there. This is probably gonna be hard to see. But that's yeah, Richmond rear end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. quick change. It's rear got end. all the little drilled out brackets and everything for the four yeah. link. It's got the top bar for the side to side. Yeah, so you ready to Dang go? They got me looking at my motors trying to figure out which one I'm going to put in mine. Ah, there's an old school Hemi. And then we also have this drawer. I bought a bunch of these arbors one day. My mom loves her flowers. I was like, here, you can have a bunch of these. <laughs> I got freaking two bags full of the damn thing. <laughs> and I got my mrc stuff all the little pegs that go in the back of mrc wheels I got drag slicks from tom daniels i got them from the trick trike series a bunch of different slicks in here these are the firestones from the max rat you can see the tread pattern on them 
Nice. And you got nice deep steelies in there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And then we got these skinny little buggers. <laughs> <laughs> pair of them. These would actually go on that Dave's Deal type of stuff. Yeah, those the other cartoony cars. Yeah. Yep. Well, not to change the subject, but I'm going to a car show tomorrow, so I might go live on my channel to show off some of the cars at the car show tomorrow because we're entering my girl's motorcycle. Cool. Maybe we can, maybe we can take home a uh, prize for her motorcycle. Cool. Be fun. And while, while you got me up on the screen there, I was looking at the Gruber Wagen box art. So I took some tracing paper and I, I got it on my screen and I matched up where the tires are on the picture, shrunk it down until the tires lined up. Then I traced the body. Cool. So now I can transfer this to my garage sale sign, cut it out and build my next little C cab. There you go. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to get around to it, but at least I got this far. <laughs> Yeah, I got for my brother's modified build. I got I got his from his graphic designer. I got his graphic design for his wrap on his car. So I sent it to my guy who's a graphic designer. And he's Mike, this is perfect. It gives me all the information I need, except I need the car that you're gonna put it on so I know how to scale it down or what size to scale it down to. So I gotta bring him over my uh open wheel modified kit and let him bring it down right. to size to where it all makes sense. You don't have to put me on big screen for this, Bob. The video will be out in a day or so. <laughs> but that's that's my senior build. Nice. Looking good. In the 66 wagon. Good buddy. I think she turned the out pretty decent. White red is always such a good good combo, man. It's hard to This is actually red. satin nickel. Oh, is it? Okay. And this is white. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. That kind of brings out more of the silver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The only problem is you don't really see the chrome on the window because of the silver. Silver. That makes sense. But, yeah. but that's what it is. <clears throat> a little 396 center. Nothing. I didn't do any wiring or additions to it. The only thing I changed was the tires. Just factory. Cool beans. Turned up pretty decent, I think. And that liquid chrome paint marker. I can touch this chrome and it does not smear at all. Yep. I've had good luck with mine too. In fact, I just put clear coat over it. So I'm hoping it does okay with that too. Yeah, this this is that liquid chrome gung hill or whatever. It's got a G on it. Oh, this is the one I got is that one that everybody was talking about. Liquid chrome. Probably the same thing. Zoit. Z O E P. Yep, that's what Bruce has. Yeah, I've had good yeah, luck. With you got to be careful with the off branded uh, pens and dispensers like that. Sometimes they will leak, so make sure they're stored tip up. Yep. I'm on their their side and have been for a few months. Haven't yet, but I'm going to take your advice because I don't want to make it a mess. Yeah, if you're going to leave them on their side, put them in a tray. They are. They're in a tray, but that, they're in a tray where they, can get, where they can get to everything else if they do. Ooh, no, no, no. Back, Always put back, them separate. Never, <laughs> never, never trust them. <laughs> back in the day when I had about 10 of these, you know, I had the flat black, gloss black, silver, red, white, blue, I'm literally green, taking yellow. Your right now, Marcy. And I took a, one of my pieces of plastic from the garage sale side and I drilled a bunch of holes in it, slide them right down in there. I had it stapled to the edge of my desk. So they would all just sit right there and dangle. <laughs> you could see what color it was. You grab the top, pull it out, and the lid is what kept it in there. So yeah, yeah. it worked out pretty nice back in the day. Somewhere I still have that piece of plastic. I think I cut it down for something for one time, but I know most of it's got like five or six holes left and then a, an angle cut off of it. <laughs> I've had good luck with the Maltov. They've been in here for a while and haven't leaked. But... All right, cards. That's an interesting trick. I didn't think of doing black wash around the chrome on the roof there to give that drip rail a little more definition. That might actually yeah, do That's it. a good idea. Give it a little contrast. That's a good idea. So, cards, just now seeing you, bud. 
yeah, I just happened to look over and I seen it. I was like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think black wash on there would be good because the chrome and that silver are so close. Obviously, mm -hmm. one's not reflective, but. But still, it gives some contrast. I'm going to have to do that with this bumper because everything gets lost in here. <laughs> That's a lot of chrome. It's a lot of chrome. You can't see me. I'm camouflaged. <laughs> Where are you? I'm right next to the chrome. You are chrome. <laughs> I am happy the way this, this chrome broke up this green, though. I thought for sure I was going to regret going with this green over that other green because that other green, the base coat, was such a cool color. But now I'm surprised the they didn't it, use a two tone on it, but it looks good. I, th I thought about it, and it's, it's got the body lines for it. It would have been really cool to have been able to, to do that. And, and maybe another one I will, but honestly, after getting the, if I'm being completely honest, the, the bug had some pretty bad orange peel in it, and it was 100% my fault. So uh, after having that, I wanted to get basically better at my airbrush skills, and this was an opportunity to do that. So now I can good, keep getting better and better from there, right? Next up is two tone, and then a good, clean, simple build, paint job kind of thing, and then yeah, start yeah, testing the, waters a little more as you go. Yep, yeah, yeah, get the uh, get get the basics right. You know, kind of have, what's the old theory, the kiss theory? Keep it simple, stupid. Yep, and yep. then and then then move up from there. And don't forget, I'm that. super happy with the with the way this paint came out. Is I've been I was fortunate, and, and it came out. It's really the camera doesn't do it justice, and there's no fish eyes in it. There's no orange. I can peel. see your reflection in the roof. Yeah, and that's 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 twelve thousand. It ain't even got polish on it right now. It's got clear coat, but that's clear coat with uh, twelve thousand grit sand on it. I got another coat of clear because I put all the chrome on it, and I want to shoot over the comb with the last bit of clear. Right. And Lock then it all it. in. So, yeah, yeah. So it. Uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. And don't forget, you know, you might progressively improve your painting but at some point you're gonna get knocked back down don't take oh, yeah. first no, <laughs> it's gonna happen <laughs> well, if you that's why i got this guy right here and this is also why he stays up underneath the the bench because man your purple pond <laughs> he stays close by because i know i'm gonna need him you know like they say the more you do it the more inevitable it is you're gonna mess it up <laughs> that's it the, oh, yeah, law of, the, the uh, law of averages you're yep. not going to get it right every time and if you do then you're not awful things yourself. that things that you would let go a year ago you won't anymore mm. right yep 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 you know, if you had a fish eye in the corner of the fender or something a year ago you might have left it just get screw it and then I still get the point. Over, you won't. Not, not, yeah, you get to this point. Like, nope, can't do that. Starting all over again. It's 99.87% good, but that damn gnat on the underneath the tail light lens. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> that little bit of glue peeking out from the corner of the chrome trim is just driving yeah. me that shit. Yeah. My seat belts are crooked. Mind. My seat belts are crooked. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, how many of us, and I know without having made a conscious effort to count how many of us have heard the quote we are our own worst critic just in this hobby never because heard it once for, yeah for <laughs> me and then for i'm sure everybody else you know it's there so yeah. your eye goes to it every time so my 50, else might not even know tv is my there. worst critic yeah yeah when it's on the big screen you're like oh i can see that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, I found it. I found your screw up. <laughs> Just speaking so you know. Of, speaking of make it work models, let me find it here. It's in my vans. Keep some vans. I built uh, one of the vandal kits, right? And everything on it looked really cool, except for the paint was all messed up on it. Oops, that's not. This is the button I'm looking for. But I. I I had a plan for it because the orig there you go, Bob. Oh, the original when when I was in Wittenberg, this is what their ambulance looked like. 
it was a nice dark blue with a white stripe and then the caduceus with the medical thing on the side. And it said Wittenberg ambulance, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, dude, that would be kind of cool, right? So I was looking at it and I got it built and I'm thinking, well, this is nervous breakdown if it's a roadside mechanic thing, right? And on this side, you don't see any damage or any paint blemish or whatever. But look at this. <laughs> all these red lines. This is all crackle. <laughs> and that's why I decided to paint it all with little red, like it's nerves. Mm, that's funny. It's my, it, my nervous breakdown is what I called it. <laughs> isn't that what Brett said? You don't see it anywhere on the rest of the body except for the roof and in the engine bay. I think it was Fred that told me. In fact, I know it was. Fred was the one that told me it's not about how good you do it. It's how good you hide it. <laughs> right. Cover it up. Yeah, I this, got one of them that looked like that. Yeah, this, this was kind of nifty. You know, you can see there's quite a little bit of it up in here and stuff. And I'm guessing I just sprayed a little too heavy up on the top. Because, like I said, the rest of it all turned out just fine. I think that's, well, you can't see that. But yeah, then pictures suck. Here, here's a good one. This was a toy, a plastic toy. And I took it apart and I rebuilt it. <laughs> it's still a plastic toy. <laughs> so one of one of my favorite supercars, the Enzo. If you ever get a chance to buy this kit, I believe it's a Ravel. This is an awesome, awesome kit. I'm not super big on the Ferraris or the supercars, but I never have been either. I never no. I I found out that these cars, you can get them pretty cheap because not everybody's into the supercars. And they come with that mesh insert for the grills and the, the front and the fins and stuff. And it's, it's a good size little sheet. Same with this one, the 360 Modena. It has a, a grill sheet that goes with it too for like back here. And I think there's something else on the back in the motor or something. I got a couple of them. But, but that was my nervous breakdown for you. The little car that could have been shoved into a purple <laughs> pond that turned out to be better than it was. <laughs> it's when you take a mistake and make it fit the project. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I ended up with a Mustang in a field. <laughs> <laughs> it's right at home. <laughs> it's, either, it's either that or an M80. <laughs> M80 might have been fun once. Yeah. After that, it's kind of, man, yeah. now I got to pick up the pieces and wish I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> right. We used to shoot water rockets too, Adam. Almost got her done there, Bob. Yes, now. Well, it's, a, it's together. I got a lot of, yeah. a lot more filling and, and stuff to do. It's not bad for a 1957 kit. And then it's time for painting it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, even unpainted, it still looks like an airplane. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, when I did it originally, that's the why they molded it in that color. Because even the, uh, again, my camera won't pick it up. Where the uh, little panel lines? Well, we're like where the star and bar go and the usaf that's all raised right so if you, you could you could sit there and paint it in by hand if you wanted where it says us air force it's all raised panel lines nice pretty groovy that's uh the atlantis repop of the 1957 Ravel kit that's cool that they dug that far back and it's not super accurate, but it was this model kit came out two years before the Air Force got the plane. So interesting. <laughs> so, the, the test bed was out there with the demonstrator, but 
but the test plane didn't have the probe on the front. It had it back here on top of the tail. Oh, got my camera there. It is. It had it back here. The test plane did instead of having it up front. So I, I put one of each on there. So it's the the transition plane. <laughs> yeah, and then the uh, the bomb pod, bomb fuel pod, never had wings on it like that. It had four little tiny ones at the back, but it never had these big fins on it. Stabilizer fins on the back. Because this one, this was it, it. The bottom two thirds of it was a fuel tank, and the top third was the nuclear payload, nuclear bomb. Interesting. So when you let it drop, the bomb would go off and it'd ignite the gas too. <laughs> well, you would use it. You would drop the before you drop the bomb. You would jettison the fuel pod. And then when I got into production, they actually had they added two rails along either side of that big tank, and they put smaller nuclear bombs on there, so they could carry four little ones and one one Moab. Right, Moab, mother of all bombs. Yeah. <laughs> The big boom boom. You guys remember them old Duesenberg cars that were radios? Yep. I took one of them one time and tore it all apart and repainted it and put it back together for my dad. I was just sitting here seeing it in my my files. <laughs> Besides one, car, one of the Duesenberg John Player radio. special. Formula One cars. That was a radio. It was my favorite, favorite thing I had as a kid. I wish I could find another one. Not have to pay through the ass for it. All right. It was always my favorite Formula One paint job. The all black with the gold pinstripes. Right. John Player Special. Is that the one with the dual wheels, up, dual steering wheels on the front? No, that would be the Tyrell. With the double front or the four front tires, <laughs> I remember that kit, and I had picked it up somewhere along the way when I was a kid. That kit was way too complicated for a nine-year-old kid. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it ever got done, but I think sure glued the crap out of everything. I don't know if John Player ever had that six-wheel one or not. Oh, they built that a lot. Tons of Ryan said it was somebody else, but they, it's, they, a, they, it, it's called the, the, elf, I sorry, the, the yeah, the elf was it elf the sponsor of the six wheel one? Uh, let me look, yeah. Up. Uh, the John Player, was yeah, the elf. Gold one. yeah, they had elf number three and elf number five, okay. And the John Player car was the black and with gold, right? Like gold, yes, yes. Yeah. black yeah. with the gold stripes, yeah. And they had several of them over the over the time, but yeah. Who drove it? Uh, Jody Schechter and Ronnie Peterson both dislike driving it. <laughs> Can imagine. I don't care how good you engineer it to get all four of those wheels to turn in a way that they're not fighting each other is right. difficult. Yeah, I'm sure you'd have to mess with the the camber and the the toe and all kinds of stuff, and then the spirit steering angles of each, you know. The well, you think the, about it, even, what is it, even, anti the anti, whatever, where it leans back and in right. a little bit, yeah, and caster camber. But if you think about it, if you got any any corner, right, the the you have an outside and an inside, uh, an inside, and if this tire has to turn faster than the inside tire, it doesn't matter which whichever tire is on the inside of the turn. Is got less distance to go than the outside tire. That's why you have a differential in your car. Yeah. But even if that tire is a foot and a half behind the other one, it's not in the same radius as the one in front of it or the one behind it. So they're yeah, got to be six feet each other wide. Longer. Yeah, it's six feet wide, so it's a much wider circle. <laughs> yeah, they, they've got to be fighting each other. That's a cool radio. That's neat. Yeah, I had one of these as a kid. I, I always loved it. I'm going to break down and buy another one one day. I find one cheap enough. Yeah, good luck with that. But I always liked that job, special paint job, the gold and black. It was always for Formula One cars. That's a super cool looking car. Yeah, it's a really cool looking car. And they're out there. They're, they made enough of those kits. They're out there. Well, I, I don't 
guess I've, I've seen them. Let's put it that way. I'm not paying attention to how much they are, but I've seen them. Yeah, people need to be willing to uh, let them go when they really aren't. I want to say I even saw it on Plaza Japan, but that might be the elf I saw on Plaza Japan. Because after opening up this daggum uh, blackbird and checking it out, I'm like, I need more of these egg planes. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> oh, how simple an addiction starts. <laughs> right? They are Wait until you get into the main tune vehicles. There's little tanks and everything. <laughs> you know what happened to me the first time I ever looked on eBay? I got a PayPal account. <laughs> little bomber. <laughs> <laughs> Payment on the PayPal account. <laughs> and I stay away from Amazon because everybody shops on Amazon and they're always like, oh, where'd you get it? Amazon. I'm like, okay, I'm staying away from Amazon because I ain't got the budget. <laughs> I um, I buy a lot of stuff for the number one. Amazon because we've got a distribution house here, right here in Ocala. I was going to so say that. We get a lot of stuff really yeah. quick. But yeah, it's hard to go on there to order some Spicer bearings and not find myself rabbit holing down paintbrushes and right. paint and models. And all the other good. suggestions that come up in the margin. Yeah. And the good news is, is they don't have a lot before. of... What about these? People who bought this also like this. this right? mm -hmm. The good news is they don't have a lot of odd or rare model kits, or at least not in the... So it's kind of like the same stuff you see at Ollie's right. and Hobby mm -hmm. Lobby and all that. So it's not like I get too excited there, but every once in a while... Yeah, when you go on eBay and you're that's when, searches that's when I get vintage models, then then you know you're you're looking. Yeah, at that's what, that's exactly <laughs> what. Literally, that's the first thing. If you push, go to my uh, uh, app and push eBay, and then the home thing comes up. You hit the search bar. The first thing that pops up is vintage models. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like no, no, stop it! Don't do that to my wallet. I I, I can't say it does, but if it did. The first thing that would pop up on mine is junkyard lots. Okay. That's because number two. I'm, I'm always looking for those certain parts, hoping that there's enough to build the kit that I don't have. Like the helmet from the little Roman, the little Roman chariot coach thing, or a, a honest engine, or you a roof. You can have somebody the... print that chariot helmet. Well, there's there's more to the kit, you know. It's it's the body, the helmet, and quite a few other little bits. I have the little hot dogger, which is the exact chassis for it, with a different intake on it, and I think the headers are different, but everything else is the same. So I'm not building it because I already got two of the little hot doggers built, but I'm saving it in case I find a parts kit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the yeah, only person I've ever seen that has it is Kim's Customs. And he's already built it. He ain't letting go of it. <laughs> My problem is the old Johan kits and them old AMT kits. I get, I go to look at that them. And then I save myself, right? Because then I go find the one that I really, really want that's 500 bucks. And I'm like, good, there. I don't have to buy it. I ain't paying that price. <laughs> I ain't paying that price. I'm out. Easy way to talk yourself off of there to yep. get offline. <laughs> oh, I've done it so many times. You load your cart up. You're like, I got to have that. got to have that. got to have that. And then you get to your cart and it's like 300 bucks. Okay, cool. I don't have to buy any of that. Take it out of my cart. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my cart always says $1,000 in it. Yep. That just. That's what's nice about my order. watch list. My watch list isn't my cart. <laughs> But I have been following Marcy's advice, and now when I do see something on eBay, I put it on my watch list. And Marcy, you nailed it right on the head. Every one yep. that I watch, they offer me a deal on it. Every yep. stinking one. I did Unless not know that. Unless it's an auction. Unless it's an Sometimes auction. it's within yeah. a couple hours. Usually it yeah. does. Yeah, but if and, if day, you leave then, it, yeah. and if you leave it in there for more than a week, you'll get lower and lower offers. It doesn't go like super uber low, but it'll mm, reduce it. Better than... This this mm -hmm. kit that I told you about now in hindsight, I'm sending it back. But that's a perfect example. He started out at sixty bucks. I put it on my watch. They said fifty. I thought it was three D printed and way more detailed, so I bought it. No, I did not. I'm sorry. I, they hit me with fifty. I declined the offer, and then they sent it back to me. And I think it was either twenty or thirty. And I was like, at that price, I'll buy it. Yeah, and not a lot to lose. Bought it. 
Yeah, because it was like half. It had to have been thirty because I remember thinking it was half of what they originally asked for me asked for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, like I said, in their defense, they've been real polite about, yeah, we'll take it back as long as it's all there. We'll give you your money. I'm like, okay, either this has happened to you before, or you've happy to do it because you've ten of them that got yeah, it. They're covering their own ass. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, there are 10 of them that got it that didn't like it, didn't say anything, so they got away with it. Yeah, that's, that was the whole thing. You know, they, they took, they're taking a chance, people are just keeping it. Yeah. 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 I remember one time I ordered a Rocksmith guitar cable that goes from the guitar to the computer, you know, because it's got specific jacks on each end. Mm -hmm. So I, I ordered it, and they sent me a pair of booty covers. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I sent him a picture back, and I was going to give him a bad review, but I figured I'd talk to him first. I'm like, no, that's what you ordered. I said, bullshit, you want screenshots? And I sent him screenshots of what I ordered, what it said I ordered. And they're like, and I showed him a picture of what I got in the mail. I'm like, this is not what I asked, asked for. And they're like, well, just send it back, and we'll refund the money. It would have cost me twice as much to send it back than it cost to get it. So I kept the booties, and I ordered it, it, my cable from somebody else. <laughs> the truth is, with this, uh, eBay sent me back. It didn't cost me nothing, and I don't even have to go to the post office. Like, they'll come to me, and I, I say they. When my post office people come to me, they scan yep. the little barcode, and they take it with yep, them. Yep, you just can't. You can literally hand it. Your, your mail carrier can take any package that's going out for the U.S. mail. doesn't yep. matter what it is. Yeah. Doesn't it yeah. doesn't even have to be scanned in? The only reason that they have to scan those in is because they belong to other companies. Mm -hmm. It's not an exchange of items between people like a gift or just a random yeah, thing right. you would mail to somebody. So they have to document those right away. Yeah, when my mail lady comes here, I can like like with the box I just sent Bob, if I would have had the, the label printed at home instead of hit the print at the post office option. I could have waited till my lady came in. She would have scanned it, and it would have been paid for, and off and the way it went. Yeah. Well, when I had a stamps.com account, I had my own little postal scale and everything here. So I always did all my own stuff, and I, my letter carrier gave me one of those white mail crates. That way, if I had more than two or three things, she would come by when she... Um, I was so leery. When she was coming in to, to do the mail on Friday, she'd pick my bin up every Friday. So. I was super leery when I went and bought my kitchen scale, my little weight thing, because I was doing a lot of online auction sales and things, right? And you need to know the, the weight for shipping. Right. And I was so leery because the last time I had a scale, <laughs> I went to prison for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> you weren't weighing the same thing, though. I don't imagine. No, I went from grams to pounds. Yeah, that was <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why the scales got you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure you know this now, but it had nothing to do. Well, very little, very little to do with the scale itself. Actually, Maybe it was the scale that got me sent to prison, because that was their proof that I was weighing it to sell. Oh, intent to say, yeah, that's to, instead of just for my personal, yeah, right. Intend to distribute, you know, that, that yeah, because without the scale, I could have said that whole pound was mine. <laughs> it's a little excessive. I'm, a, well, I'm heavy. I mean, granted, there was four ounces weighed up, there was two ounces of quarters, two ounces of eights, and a scale, and mine was already in my pocket. <laughs> Well, on that note, guys, I'm going to dip out. Like I said, I got this uh, show in the morning. I want to take a couple snap pics of this and post it up on the old Facebook. So I'm going to let you all go. You all have a great night. night. Be safe. Uh, thanks for Bob, hanging thanks with for, us. Thanks for hosting. Whoops. No problem. All right? nope. Thanks for hosting. Chat, it's always good to see everybody. You all be good. Be safe. Be kind to each other. And we'll see you next time. Don't tell all me right, I do what you wouldn't do. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> right, Mark. Glad you got to see me. Say it. Wait, later. Good old Mike. He's fun. Yeah. You finding all kinds of little treasures there, Bruce? Well, I think I found enough pieces for that 32, to put at least a front end under. And I found mirror brackets. When you fed her at dinner time, how much meat did you put in her food? 
but I haven't found any door handles or lights or or any of that stuff I'm actually looking for. But I've found all kinds of stuff to remember that I'll forget later. Is that what you need, Bruce? Is that what you need? Those what are door handles. Those are door handles. Oh, for semi? No, they're just car oh. cars. There was actually six of them in this station wagon kit, but it's only four doors. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, I, I know I know why they did it is because this is a 66 Chevelle 396 wagon. And if you look at the original kit, it's the 66 Chevelle Z16, the little two-door coupe kind of thing. And this one's the California wheels where it's got the, the bigger wheels with the brake discs and whatever. But the hot rod parts are actually on their own separate tree. And so are the uh, those door handles. Whereas in the wagon kit, those four are molded on the stock sheet. <laughs> well, I'll just do like I did on that uh, 30 chair I rebuilt a couple years ago. I just took some... Uh, Small round sprue and then heat it and bend it. And it called it a door handle. Well, you could always just say it's got Ken Diggit ones on it. Yeah. <laughs> the flush mount Ken Diggits. Well, I got I got mirror brackets so I can take flat styrene and put some round rod on it and call call mirrors. Right. I don't build much for semis. I know I have some semi ones in my thing. I used to have them all separated, but... Oh, look! A whole box of gear shifts, Marcy. <laughs> yeah, I got one under the drawer, too. This is kind of what you're looking for, this style for your truck? No, that's for a pickup truck. Well, I well, guess it could work on a semi. Well, this this is a smaller one. It was the first yeah. one I seen that I could grab, but I also have like like this one. It's much bigger. Yeah, they're pretty good size. And then I got oh, like these ones, which I think came off of the T six hundred A. I think. Yeah. And what of course, there's there, want? there's plenty more in there. <laughs> what do you two want? Is that right? Hmm. Well, I guess I'll be back. Anybody need some hood hinges? <laughs> I only got. Uh, a I don't use them either. <laughs> I only got a couple. <laughs> yeah, I think you got a few. Got some right here. All right, all right, we're going. We're going. One of my favorite drawers. Nothing but carburetors. <laughs> this this one's almost half full. It's kind of hard. Hard to show the side without tipping it in the I got oil pans, I got batteries, I got master cylinders, parachutes, fan, fan belt, fans on the fan belt. I got a under hood thing that has everything from oil filters and alternators and starters and all the little goodies that go under the hood. <laughs> I got a a drawer for single carburetor intakes, dual carburetor, fuel injected, superchargers, and then some other goofy stuff like the Porsche and the Corvair and Volkswagen. And if anybody ever needs a license plate, I got a full drawer of just license plates. <laughs> I got headlights, taillights, the clears. We got under hood hoses, <laughs> one for interiors, one's for gas pedals and shifters and gauges, big one of steering wheels. I got 10 drawers that are nothing but exhaust parts. I separated all my small block and my big block just because they're different styles. Got one for headers, one for stock. <laughs> got side pipes. I got mufflers. I got catalytic converters. 
like I said, the sooner you organize it, the sooner it is and easier it is to find your parts. When you finish a kit with extra parts, just throw them in the right drawer. <laughs> Otherwise, you end up like Bruce digging through a box trying to find something. <laughs> Yeah, most of mine are bagged and labeled with what kit they came from. And they're all in, in a gigantic plastic container. You, usually if I bought like a three-in-one and it had a bunch of extra parts already still on the tree that I didn't need, then I'll put them in a bag and do it like that. I think I got a drawer over there. It's probably got about 20, 30 different bags in there of leftover pieces. Most all still on the tree. Which is kind of nice, because if somebody's buying spare parts to fix a project, if it's still on the tree, it's up to them to take it off. You know, it's not like it's got sprue damage on it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not like I ask any more for it like that than with or without, but I just feel it's it's a nicer touch, you know, to if it's still on the tree, that's kind of nice. <laughs> Out in the garage, I got one model box that's nothing but parts on the tree. That's all that's in there is parts on the tree. And then yeah, little after they sit around for a while or they get moved a bit, they don't stay on the tree. Well, it seems they're in that box, and that box is rarely ever touched unless I'm adding to it or looking for a specific part. I don't think there's but maybe one, maybe two parts in the bottom of the box so far. I mean, I rarely go through it, but <laughs> then I got like. I would have like, to go through that and get the appropriate size plastic bags and at least bag them. That way, if something does fall off, you don't have to worry about where it's at. See, this this is another thing I have a lot of is all the the rims, you know, any of the extra rims that are still on the tree. I just. I don't need them because I already got drawers full of just wheels, you know, so. The drawer is full of sprues of rims. <laughs> Heck, you could do a table at a model show just with your parts. Yeah. And all I'd have to do is bring five of my 60 drawer bins, two big boxes, and four or five of them three drawer Rubbermaid things. <laughs> yeah. Them little three foot tall ones. Yeah, I got a couple of them. Oh, and my big blue one of all my tires. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, they've been out there for about four or five years now, and I've never even, well, I've looked in there a couple of times because there are a couple other things in there, but obviously I don't need them when I have this drawer sitting here full of freaking more tires than I'll ever use, and I keep adding to it. Like like this one here. <laughs> it's yeah. It's almost as long as my keyboard. <laughs> not quite yeah, that, that's a that's a graveyard. That's not a parts box. <laughs> but all all of these are brand new bag tires, and I'm like, why would I open them when I got all of these? <laughs> yeah. You know? Anytime I get a kit that has brand new tires in the bag, but I already have them loose. I don't even bother with them in the bag. I just throw them in the drawer with the rest. <laughs> and again, if I was to sell them, they're still factory sealed. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And if I was like Bob, always using the, the resin wheels and stuff like that, I'd have no reason to ever open them. <laughs> you know? Yeah, ever, ever since I started using resin wheels, I'm ending up with lots of stock lots kit wheels. Of extra <laughs> wheels. <laughs> yeah, it happens. I mean, I did just get rid of some because this is getting ridiculous. And I got a shit. I got a bin. I forgot to put a curd yesterday. Oh, well, I bought next week. I um, went through some of my older parts boxes and got all the junk out of it. It's just junk, junk, you know? Mm hmm. Put it into a smaller container. And then I, I gave a box away and then I created a box for something else. <laughs> 
Ain't that funny? Most you try to most try of to, my excess. Most of my excess is gone. Ain't that funny? That you stuff. try to get rid of some stuff and you end up with more than you got rid of. <laughs> I've done that, yeah. <laughs> but at least it's been things like you know full kits or right. pieces that I need for something that you know whether I broke it or I didn't have it or whatever you know or I melted it like the entrance of the truck. <laughs> This this is a box just like Bruce is going through. It looks like a bunch of bigger pieces on the top. Mm -hmm. And this this is where there's still oh, there's one right there. This is my doggy fur. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another one. Doggy fur. There's a whole bunch of doggy fur in here. I can pet my puppy. Aw. <laughs> but if I dig down underneath here, I can grab a handful of like there's probably about 50 parts right there. <laughs> but there's stuff like dragster bits and little piece of sprue from a tester's car that I turned into like a little go-kart. <laughs> I got two of them, one from an Ertl. <laughs> but this this is a Bruce box right here. <laughs> there's a knife blade dispenser thing. <laughs> Make sure you use a capital B. There's a, a knife cap from the old testers. I used to cut these down and turn them into air cleaners on superchargers and stuff. <laughs> yep, done that. There's a, a large scale engine piece for an air conditioner unit on the Corvette, I think. <laughs> Viper cross member piece of sprue. <laughs> it's just sprue. <laughs> oh, come on. It's got to be something. Well, it is something eventually, but for now, it's just fruit. <laughs> well, if you heat it up and stretch it, it can be an antenna. There's a there piece of a, there's the piece of a Dodge truck chassis that I shortened. <laughs> you know, the nice part about keeping boxes of sprue is you can practice and practice and practice. Same with a box like this. Oh, looky. It looks like a Zippo lighter spring. <laughs> Well, I can truly say I have no air horns or chicken lights to go on that tractor, so now I know what to go look for. Well, in this box right here, is this what you're looking for? Little air horns like this, but bigger? Yeah, they're the bigger ones. They're singles. Yeah, yeah, I, I have bigger ones. This was just one I knew was in here. And here's another one. There should be a yeah, longer one. Yeah, I found one some right of those. Here. I thought, well, maybe I'll put those on there. But I, I set it on top, and I went, that looks like shit. <laughs> oh, is, the, is what other kits? Oh, I know which one this came off. This came off of my uh, Corvette, my Va Va Boom Corvette. <laughs> I got, I found one of those a while ago. That was what was on that Volkswagen. Here's a, a much bigger horn. That's kind of like quite what I'm needing. There you go. Here's your Dukes of Hazard horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my little trinket box that's got all my little, uh, basically lights like this, you know, the old lantern style lights. And I got a bunch of the little stuff in here, like little badges and scripts and things like that. But I'm sure I have a couple more of them horns in there somewhere. So if you don't find them and you really want them or need them, let me know. Throw me a parts list. I'll go through my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go through this box, but I will go through the other ones. Meanwhile, I'm going to grab a couple of pieces of fur so I can pet my puppy. <laughs> Put him back in the box. Pet the puppy. Pet the puppy. Why is that carburetor sitting sideways on that engine? <laughs> Must have been a junkyard engine I bought. Well, I thought, well, maybe I stuck it in this little box. But no, they're not in here either. Is this the one that's got the Viper in it? Oh, it is. My 3D printed Viper body. It's 
see somebody yeah. had a file for Star Fury. My 3D printed Viper Pursuit model from the TV oh. series. <laughs> from the TV <laughs> series Viper. So you you was talking car, I was thinking spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> well, Battlestar Galactica, Viper. <laughs> Yeah, this this was a cool score. I was I was kind of glad to get this one, and I had already built one and sent it to my buddy, and then he sent me this one in return plus some money for the one I built them. I, mean, I think I got like five of these freaking AMT Viper kits around. Probably about thirty freaking hoods for it. Same with that purple Corvette concept car. <laughs> Corvette 3 or whatever they call it. Stingray 3. I think I had like a dozen of them damn things. Come on, get in there. You came out of there. You can sit back in there. <laughs> Freaking ridiculous weather you fuck off and this space is warm or at least reasonably warm and dry. Good luck with that. <laughs> fucking 70s in the daytime and then below 40 at night for the fucking bird. Yeah, it's supposed to get uh, 26 tonight here. <laughs> I found my little King Bob. My my mini King Bob, yeah. my little mini Millennium Falcon. <laughs> he got a little ball bearing on the bottom. Another treat. Here you go. There you go. See, you even got a little I have ball. the Hallmark, the uh, Star Wars and Star Trek Hallmark um, Christmas decoration <laughs> set, the ornaments. It's I pretty detailed. It's pretty detailed for being this tiny. It's sure. Mattel. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> My Isn't little that the one out of the Happy Meal? I don't know. I mean, I it, have, yeah. actually, yeah, right. it's got triangle screws in it, so that would be Happy Meals, McDonald's stuff. And I know that because I've taken quite a few McDonald's cars apart. <laughs> <laughs> My little zoomer. <laughs> the last time I went to Hayward with mom for her appointment, we stopped at one of the Dollar Trees or whatever it was and in their little crafty section with the wood stuff. Mm -hmm. I found something I had been looking for for a long time. Now I just got to build everything to go around it. <laughs> it's not really the right kind of top on it. But I'm going to do the same thing I did with my tool truck and use this as the cab of a truck. Okay. And instead of having it just popped open like this, I want to pull the hinges off the back and raise the whole thing up. So it has like post on the back and then a little post on the front for the windshield. And then these would be like the doors. And then this is just the top of a treasure chest. And it's supposed to be a treasure chest which is why this is the wrong top on it. Yeah. But it's it's not much wider than an actual model, so it's this is about the right size for what I'm looking for. Put a couple of seats down in there with a dashboard yeah, and all that. Those pre-made wooden boxes do come in a, a natural treasure chest shape. Well, of the ones that I looked at, this was the closest one that was either decent enough in shape and size without all the gaudy didn't want that kind of stuff on it, you know, cause they had a cut like three different shapes, but yeah, I would like to find one with a rounded top, but I think this is thick enough. Well, you, you can see it's not super thick where it's white, but I should be able to shave that down because these are thick enough. I have a little bit of room right there mm -hmm. that I might be able to, shave it down and kind of round it and then maybe cover it in plastic again anyway 
but for Hot Wheels, they have a, a series called Treasure Hunt series. Yeah. Which are collector pieces. And that's that's what this is gonna be, is my treasure hunter. It'll okay. have like fake diamonds for headlights and rubies for tail lights yeah. and ornaments on it and stuff. And I don't know if I'm gonna use like a a thirties Ford kind of set of fenders on it or something similar to that. I might go with like the old 1900s where they had the flat fenders on them, but kind of more my my Gruber Wagen style, you know, where they're just a straight fender. They're not that big rounded like. Give it a little older, older style. When, back when the gold hunters and the prospectors would have been running around with horses and wagons. <laughs> Speaking of, I got that. Amish, <laughs> the Amish buggy that I got from Jimmy Leadhead. Mm -hmm. I thought the most comical thing to do with it would be make it because it's a wooden buggy with the, the horse drawn carriage. Mm -hmm. But seems it's an Amish buggy. I thought it would be perfect as an electric buggy. Oh, that's <laughs> not right. That's because not right. Amish ain't allowed to have the electric. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Red? <laughs> yeah, we're doing a little Hi, Red. <laughs> I didn't even see Theo's comment. Red, how you like? I'm not sure if Theo's question. I was leaning back in my chair because my back's been bugging me, and I had to go to the clinic. And get some anti-inflammatories and some muscle relaxers so I'm kicked back on a heating pad and I don't I can't see the the chat the text right. is too small to be this far away from it right <sighs> yeah see here here's my Amish bug or Dutch buggy Dutch buggy but yeah. I, I thought that would be I thought that, <laughs> that would, would be, be perfect bad. for that would be bad yeah, get like a Tesla engine on the back or something, you know. <laughs> I think it'd be perfect. <laughs> Self-propelled buggy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not? I mean, it's just an old the balsa. solar panel in the roof to power it. <laughs> I don't even know if it's balsa or not, but the only mm. plastic part are the wheels. Yeah, <laughs> Everything usually else those is wood. kits like that are that really super, super, super thin wood. Well, this, this stuff is actually not bad. It's pretty thick. Sad part is this one is... Oh. This stuff here, the one that's missing, mm. is actually busted, which is fine. I can just glue it back together or make... As long as you have the pieces, you can make it work. Yeah. I mean, I got the template right there. If I trace that out real quick, I'm good to go, you know? Yeah, that's the stuff. Red says balsa wood. Basswood. Not balsa, basswood. It's, oh, basswood. Well, it's sorry. really hard. That's why they snap. My bad. I do a lot of dollhouse stuff, so I got boxes of this scrap stuff everywhere. Yeah. Well, be good but I do think it. this would be perfect for an electric buggy. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the video has to be Amish Paradise, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Yeah. Wouldn't make sense without that little weird Al Yankovic. That guy's nuts. Oh, but he's a blast. He is. <laughs> he's just flat nuts. I love it. Yeah, it's, it was a crazy concept, and they caught on. He actually got permission from every single artist he's ever mock copied. <clears throat> and he was told by Madonna, you have to do like a surgeon. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even the one that came up with it. She did. She's like, I'm waiting for you to do one of my songs. <laughs> I should not be sitting here eating little mini powder donut. Don't tell yourself what not to do. <laughs> No, I said I shouldn't be. Oh, yeah. But I'm about uh, to eat the last half of the last one. 
there were only six, just a little pack. <laughs> so it might have been enough to be one whole donut. <laughs> donut, donut, said donut. 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 Squirrel. <laughs> yep. Oh man, not any, not any donuts. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure no, we've got a 24-hour uh, gas station around somewhere. You can get some of the host. i got to drive eight miles to get there, though. Well, it's <laughs> not a donut, but I'll share my peeps with you. Yeah. <laughs> You're my peeps, man. They have ruined peeps. Oh, my God. they got peeps for every fucking holiday now. I was waiting to throw them in the microwave and see how they work. <laughs> no, the guy won't be at the bakery for another two hours to start making donuts, so i got to wait. Yeah. Right. <laughs> about five, five a.m. I can knock on the back door and buy them hot out the back door. A, a chrome donut? Ooh. <laughs> they don't open till six, but at, at five I can knock on the back door and you know get one. So would that be Molotov glazing on that donut? Yeah. <laughs> that ain't nothing. Ain't nothing like a fresh donut, man. Yeah, or cookies right out of the oven. Yeah. I love fresh snickerdoodles right out of the oven. Yeah. Damn. That would be a glass of milk. I'm in heaven. So you were Santa Claus. I knew I knew you from somewhere. Shh, don't <laughs> bring it around, man. Santa Claus is lactose intolerant. Don't you watch the movie? Oh, yeah, that's right. My bad. <laughs> that just means he doesn't get any milk with his cookies. Not anymore. <laughs> They're both too damn expensive. She doesn't get almond milk or soy milk. Or... I think that's what that get little girl gave her was soy milk. Yeah. He said he's not close and tolerant. I love that progressive commercial. Jamie, I thought you were lactose intolerant. I am, but this is milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sent Jess the video of all the Target Lady commercials today. Oh, did you? Nice. Nice. <laughs> awesome. My favorite one is when she's asking about the, the Keurig cups. And they ask, they ask the customer, do they have more of those back doors? Oh, yeah, they got lots. She just walks away from the register to go get them. <laughs> the other one's where she swallowed the UPC codes and was shooting the scanner at her stomach to, to ring stuff in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, here you go. You can get them back now. <laughs> I keep reaching at the screen until I realize it's a screen in my way. Otherwise, I'd have some doggy treats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried. I tried. <laughs> there's a uh, regular milk bones, and there's the soft ones, and then there's these little round ones. That's turkey, and that that's beef. And this one's turkey. A little round yeah. ones are good. Well, if you ever hear the thumping on your screen, that's me trying to grab them. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, the Marl bones must be like on a national back order. You can't find them anywhere. Uh, they actually had a recall on some dog products. I'm trying you to get to me one of them. Of I'm trying to get me one of them. Hand it here. Yeah. <laughs> Not working. <laughs> Cookie, Monster have mad. <laughs> Cookie Monster mad. <laughs> I'm wondering if they were on recall. Chewie said they're still having trouble getting them. So, yeah, so. they could be on recall, and you might want to check all of your pet treats. And make sure. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Red. <laughs> and you know your foods and everything because there's constantly recalls on pet stuff. Yeah, well, so far the stuff that I have is okie dokie. Okily dokily. But Wizzy sure is missing her marrow bones. She loves those. You see that comment there, Bruce? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Sorry, Rad. <laughs> that's funny right there. I don't care who you is. <laughs> I was looking at my screen. This one, uh, the B-58 Red, is it, it's all right for what it is. Uh, I mean, it's a 1957 Ravel kit. They just re cleaned up the tooling and redid it. I mean, at the end of the day, it looks like a B-58. I, I, I did it with the wheels closed, and I'm going to put the uh, put it on stand. But at the end of the day, once it gets a paint job on it, then it's going to look like a B-58. So. And it's not bad. I think they're like twenty dollars, something like that. That's pretty cheap. I think I caught they're like twenty two dollars. I ordered this one directly from Atlantis, pre-ordered it, so I, I paid the premium price on them. So you'll probably see them for fifteen or eighteen dollars on on all the sites for too long. I do that with some stuff because you know it's going to be popular and it's going to disappear. So I don't mind paying a little bit extra. My figure since I have the actual b58 modelers association page on facebook that i should probably get one of the kits right away so i can show it makes sense I ain't quite big enough yet to get them to send me one for free but <laughs> Well, that sucks we got we got about two thousand members in it so it's not small yeah really So I figured I'd get have to get my daughter one from the pre-order, so I get one right away and get it built, and I can get it up on there so people can see what it is and see if they want to buy it or not. Hmm. Put an eBay search one twenty fifth Peterbilt parts. Since it's a Peterbilt, I figured I'd find Peterbilt parts. No, no, every, no chicken lights and no mirrors. Everything else. Huh. That's weird. But in what which one it is and look for parts trees, you might be able to find the whole chrome tree. Do you have any other semi trucks at all? Bruce? Yeah. Not just built. Not, just not any you want to take the parts off of to build that one. Right. <laughs> They're all built. <laughs> Yeah, I got one brand new semi and trailer that I haven't decided what I want to do with yet. So it's it's a poster on my wall right now. <laughs> Here's a Peterbilt AMT trailer at $180. Damn. Pre-owned. Uh, they don't give you the opportunity to say anything but pre-owned or used. Yeah. Here's an Alaskan hauler for $295 in their wildest dreams. Let me see if I got something in this box. Those are called California Coast Mirrors, West Coast Mirrors. I can make the mirrors. I, I got the brackets. That's all matters. I hate yeah, all, I'm gonna this one. The only chrome parts it's got are the uh, the headlights and the radiator that I can make out what they are. Anyway, it's parts kit. I'm looking. Well, you just all matter how your word changes. I find if you put in the uh, price plus ship plus shipping lowest first, you'll find it'll kind of sort out all those little parts. Yep, that's what I do. There's some fuel tanks, radiator, logo stick, fuel tank. 
Well, sadly, I'm not seeing any uh, kicking lights or horns in this box. This is a bummer because this is where most of my big rig stuff well, is. The, pro the problem is with that being a uh, cam over, there are the long lights. Here's a set of horns. Peterbilt 352 horns from the AMT 131-1660 kit. They're kind of hang time once a month for them. You want six bucks for them. Plus five dollars. That's, kind of, that's ridiculous. That's just actually rude. <laughs> Just the two two horns. That's all it is. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I gotta put them tires in there now. Man, I can see six bucks for the chrome tree. Yeah, really. There's a rat fink international for seventy dollars. Yeah. And they bought at Ollie's for twenty. Yeah, and that kit just came out that that long. Here's the wrecker, the wrecker cab mirrors for the 359, but again, it's eight dollars for the parts and five dollars for shipping. Yeah, I've been chasing that truck, Marcy, for about a year now. Yeah, they sold them for the truck and trailer 20 bucks a piece. So, I know, anybody, I got the trailer. You you see this reselling them on places like eBay, all bought at Ollie's. So if they've got something up that says make an offer, offer them the $20 and put a note on it that says I know you got it at Ollie's. Right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, they don't have that on there. They've sold 37 of them though. Uh-huh. Well, well that means they bought them by the case. <laughs> yep. It's I not can't. hard to do. Ollie's doesn't limit what you're allowed to buy. I got there. The trailer was the only thing left. The guy said, well, the guy just bought the last case of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's they good. have, they sell to first come, first serve. Doesn't matter. Your yep. money's green there. Sadly, there's no chicken lights in this box. I didn't see any marker lights. I only saw one set of the horns, and that was, that was 10 bucks for two horns. That's just idiotic. Uh, no. Right, you can buy brass ones for that. Well, you can no. take you can take regular sprue, heat it up, and then put a, a, a cone in the end and make a trumpet out of it. But. Yeah. Probably exactly what I'm going to do. I'll probably do the same thing with the lights. So I got used to take a round rod and taper the one end of it. All right. Put a groove around the front about two two millimeters. So it's, back. Back. it's got just a chrome exhaust pipe, the the U joint looking part. And he wants six dollars for it, and oh, he's this different guy because he's shipping it for free, but he wants seven or seven dollars for the two pieces. Yeah. If shipping is free, $4 of that is shipping. Hmm. And he'll, put it, he'll put it in a flat envelope and it'll promptly get broken on its way to you. Yep. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Flea market rats now live on the internet. I just... There's just one. There's one. It's a decent amount of parts, and it's not a bad price, but you didn't have the parts you need. Hey, you're right, Reddit. They will bring you good money. I mean, I could. Take a cab over and make one. But that's not the same thing. Yeah, can you probably go to like a model railroading supplier and get the G scale air horns for a diesel engine for out of made out of brass for less than ten bucks? Yeah, that's kind of what I was sitting here thinking. And that would be the big big train horns, and they would be one twenty ninth scale, but still they would probably work right for truck horn mm -hmm. or even RC car aftermarket stuff. Because I know there's a massive freaking bunch of people into the RC semi trucks. 
Matter of fact, let me look at that. Let's see, let's see what's there. Yeah, my okay. my second favorite shop has a lot of that stuff. G scale. Train horn. Hmm. I don't see any of them. Yeah, here's a guy that's got to. Uh, you buy the cab, you get the lights and mirrors and all that stuff. Thirty dollars. <laughs> you might as well buy a brand new kit. He bought twenty dollars. Where you buy the kit? Jerks. I'm sorry. Did I say that loud? No, I didn't hear you. My inner <laughs> voice just it, 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 <laughs> can't control it. Sorry. I like Better your inner other. voice. It says it like it is. <laughs> Better, than, better than those other two voices. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, those other two fuckers give me ideas. Uh -huh. <laughs> what I'm sitting here saying. They're a bad influence. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd usually end up doing all the work. You know, the other two guys, you know, me and myself, I do all the work. Right. I just sit back and do nothing. Me, myself, and I are fine, but we ain't the same since we've been hanging around with us. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I've never missed a photo, it's red. Yeah, here's two, two horns for a G scale aristocraft FA1 locomotive. That'd be the same looking style that go in a truck. And there are nine. Nine ninety nine, seven dollars shipping. They're three. They're three D prints. I got the robot and the photo etch set. Oh god, what did I pay for those? I think I paid like twenty five bucks, for, and I got both of them. Well, Bruce, as much as I'd like to help, this is all I got is that set of mirrors that are bigger and this one horn. <laughs> yeah, that's the photo etch set that I got. I just happened to have a it's about an inch and three eighths. A mom and pop shop that and doesn't these are really an help inch. you. <laughs> I don't know if a, these would help you, Bruce, but I ain't using had the photo etch for a long time, so he gave me a deal. Well, like I said, I got the brackets for the mirrors. I can make the flat part of the mirror. It's just right. flat plastic. But... Well, if I do, I'll let you know. Yeah, they're... I'll, I'll put them both in the same drawer so I know where to find them easy. <laughs> and then tell us which drawer it is because you'll forget. Yeah, they're, well, in, they're in the one with my lantern lights. It's not a whole lot in that drawer. I would put them back in the mirror okay. box, but I'd lose the horn. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull me down, Bob. Oh, I didn't even think of this box. This is one of them big square drawers. Okay. This is three quart <laughs> or at least half full. And this is probably a bad idea, but. <laughs> See what I started? Look at all them little parts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can I grab, a, you can grab a handful of about 2,000 parts and no problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, that worked well, out pretty you know, good. I mean, Not I bad. I'll go look see if I find a 3D file for those chicken lights. Not bad. I only lost two parts and a little bit of dust. Not bad. I'm nope. impressed. That worked no out pretty good. No peppy fur? Um, yeah, well, yeah, there's plenty in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's see. We got cinder blocks. We got a box of Air Jordans or Nikes. One of these is an Air Jordans box. <laughs> well, that's what I was doing while going on sorting through that stuff. I just can't remember this. Well, this is that and this is that. I remember this part. Hey, I know where that goes. 
<laughs> well, I can't tell you what I had for breakfast yesterday. Squirrel. <laughs> no, it wasn't squirrel. <laughs> no, look. Oh, squirrel. <laughs> it's an actual squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this box needs to be gone through and sorted way more. Red, I'm way past them nicotine patches, dude. <laughs> Many eight years ago, a bit matter of fact, <laughs> yesterday. The worst part about this box is there's so much stuff like this where it's just thin little rods. So I can't yeah. just like scoot stuff around because there's so many little. Little freaking bars and tubes and I mean look at that shit. There's bits and bobs. There's tiny little pieces in there. I know I got some over here. You wanna see my, you wanna see mine again? I've been watching yours because I love it. I oh, know it's for you. I don't know who's calling, but it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the transparent red at that. That's cool. Yeah, I got all kinds of little trinket right, trees in here. Go ahead and just quit, Red. Don't, don't, don't half-ass it, man. Just do it. I got a little Red Baron gun. <laughs> yeah, I found a I shotgun. Got, I found a shotgun a while ago. I put it in the... Uh, you got a set of these for your truck? They're mud flaps? Yep. They're the front flaps, I should say. Yeah. I want to really say fun. these are actually off of a snap kit, though, because they got the little tang on it where it would fit uh -huh. in. So this is a 132nd, I'd guess. All right, Bob. What's that from? I'm going to blow it up so I can see. It's just a little missile. Oh, yeah. It's like a... It actually looks like a, a unguided rocket from like a World War II plane. Yeah, whatever it is, I got a, a plane. Yeah, it's a rocket. I got a plane from something somewhere one day. I'm guessing that's uh, that color. It probably came from a Ravel Corsair, 148 Corsair. I wouldn't doubt this came off of like a, a motorcycle at one time. I'm guessing. It looks like part of a hair barrette thing that the girls use. No, so that's actually, you're thinking, hair barrette. <laughs> it's actually a model part, but no, the one, is, the one, I, the one I found red it was has the barrel. Not the not the plane shotgun. Just to have, this is the one with the barrel. So I put it in my 007 police car, which that kit is a good kit, by the way. Hey, I got a wheel chalk if you need it. <laughs> Keep that car from rolling off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the the bug thingies from the Der Beetle bus, the old VW. <laughs> And that piece, that's pretty badass. That's a front suspension piece. I'm mm -hmm. surprised I still haven't used that on something. <laughs> it's just got really long shocks on it. Oh, there's my Air Jordans. You see the little Air Jordan dude? <laughs> my, little, my little box of Air Jordans. <laughs> I knew he was in there. That's cute. One of my drawers, I have a bunch of magazines. You know how they're just a front and a back, and you fold them over, and you can put them on the seat of the car or whatever. I have a bunch of car magazines and all kinds of fun stuff. All kinds of nifty pieces in these little trinket bars. There's another part to my Orange Blossom special, the headers. And I haven't even gotten down there yet. <laughs> I probably even have Bob's Landau bars in here somewhere. Yeah, I am in a bail, guys. I need to go and get some sleep. It's yeah, like kicking my mm. ass. Have a good one. There's that shotgun, Red. Can you put that up, Bob? <laughs> it's a little one. Night, everybody. Night, Night Marcy. I can't be far behind you. Yeah, me too. I don't know what that kid's what, what that's off of.
Yeah, me either. So I'm, I'm gonna put it in my double seven Ford car, police car. <laughs> my buddy built built this one, so I know it's a good one. I was right, Bob. I was right. Bandai bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had them. They're <laughs> out there, Bob. I just yeah. didn't think to look in this box for them. <laughs> I'm almost afraid of this box because of how much is actually. It's like the carpet monster. As soon as you get, don't need the part anymore, you find it. Yeah. Yeah, here's that's the, true. Here's the gauges and whatever for the front of a, a motorbike. <laughs> Parts I know I never use. Yeah, I'm not seeing any horns in here, but I'm not looking. It, it's kind of hard to look because there's top layer, middle layer, and then bottom layer. <laughs> Every time you move stuff, everything gets shifted around. So you got to go through it like 12 times to find anything. Yeah, that's why I use a big countertop. Just spread it out. <laughs> well, I got the old reel to reel. Chrome kind of hard to see with the glare, but yeah, you'll know, you'll yeah. reel the reel. <laughs> I think I have a few of those. I found, I found a bunch of those earlier. That and TVs. Mm -hmm. eight, I found two eight tracks. A couple CB radios. That's nothing new. Oh, duh! Why didn't I think of that? I knew I had another box that had other stuff uh yep you know the uh what is it l100 the Lindbergh truck oh, that's not it where did i find where where did i see him oh come on oh, really all the way down in the middle of this thing These these are actually the supports for the side mirrors on the A100. <laughs> Should be another one down here, I think. But these are a different style of mirror, too. Yeah. Now that's a skinny chassis. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. This, I believe, is from like the uh, Myers Manx uh, Barris T buggy. Little Corvair engine in the back and stuff. All kinds of fun, nifty little parts and pieces. I thought they would have been in here, but I'm not seeing them. Yep. Big There's a little, forward. <laughs> a little <laughs> topper that I made for one of my Hot Wheel trucks. <laughs> Just a little piece of plastic. <laughs> See, like I said, I tend not to use my chrome tree stuff. And there's more horns, but they're the little ones. Like I said, I got a bunch of those, but... Guess I could split one in half and cut, make it, make it longer. <laughs> I got a bunch of these. If they would work for chicken lights, but they're they're flat with a ball on the end. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but they're they're about as long as a finger width almost. Yeah, that's about how long those are. I mean, well, they'd the, work, the rest they, of the hose anyway. They would work for chicken lights if you fill in that's the top and give them that solid rounded look you know i just got that ball off the end and that got front of it the lens just parts to me <laughs> unsorted parts oh buick rims nice semi cab semi cab trailer parts <laughs> from the the race car stuff <laughs> Yeah, I, li I like these big drawers in the middle. I need more of these. 
I don't think there's any down here either. No. Well, I st I'm still old school. I still use boxes. Yeah, I, like I said, uh, let's see if I can do this while I'm looking. Those two boxes right there, Detroit Axle, I think there's seven model boxes in each of those, and they're nothing but parts. Everything's separated and organized. All right, focus again. Focus. Oh, there we go. Cheese balls. <laughs> Cheese balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your hands off my cheesy puffs. <laughs> cheesy poofs. <laughs> Leave my cheesy poofs alone, man. <laughs> yeah. That puppy fur. Yeah, don't pet the puppy. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get <laughs> off here, too. Well, good luck hunting for parts. Yeah, well, I'm sitting here thinking I got one more box. You can pull me down, Bob. I think it's back here underneath this other desk. It seems to me like it's got junk semi parts in it. But that's not going to be a tomorrow thing. <laughs> All right. Because I don't feel like moving it, rolling this cabinet out of the way behind me. <laughs> it's on wheels. All right. It would work. I want to thank everybody in the chat for joining us, and uh, thank you to Ryan and Bruce. And Marcy's gone already. Hey, he's gone already. He's in, and we'll catch up with you again sometime over the weekend. So I'll see you night, everybody. Matt Red, I'll let you know later, buddy. Thanks for hosting the late nights. I like. Yeah, them. thanks, Bob. No problem. Till next time, have a.